I'm John. Welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe de Rene. It's special Ask Rene and Ask Paul Anything episode. Uh, I'm joined once again by the Star Show, Mr. Rene Dupree. Rene, where's Paul? That is the question on everyone's mind every week is where's Paul? He'll be here shortly. He's being fashionably late as usual. Are you there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. We got a blizzard going on outside in Canada. Right. So if I lose connection, I apologize, everyone. Yeah, it's pretty cold here as well. Um, It's fucking cold. I hate the cold. It's uh, it's like minus three during the daytime. And we're just not used to it over here. Mm. Yeah, we got 35 centimeters of snow and counting. So, a lot of shoveling to do, which is okay. It's good exercise. So, what's going on as we wait for our uh, guest slash? Uh, well, it's raw thirty tonight. Raw XXX, as they call it. Um, few of the legends has turned up. None of the big lit. Well, Hulk Hogan's there, and the Undertaker's there. Triple H and Shawn Michaels, who's always there. But I'm like. You know, there's no stone cold or no rock. <laughs> mm. I wonder if they're uh, gonna have like other surprise guests like that you don't see very often, you know. Possibly. Uh well I just across... Demento when we need them. That's who we need. Um just came across that recently. Apparently, um WGB quietly offered Stone Cold like big money to have a match with Roman Reigns. Oh yeah. And- it hasn't said if it's been agreed or anything like that, but apparently it's something they want to see happen. So, I mean, Stone Cody he, he made a good effort last year at uh, WrestleMania against Kevin Owens. They main evented night one of the show, and uh, it, it's a good display. Obviously, he's been out of the ring for a long time, but I don't know. Would you want to see Roman Reigns v Stone Cody Steve Austin? How was the Owens uh, Austin match? Was it last year? Last year, it was a brawl. Uh, obviously, you know Austin. How old's Austin now? He's a good age now, isn't he? he must be fifties, would you say? Oh fuck! At least he's probably pushing close to sixty. Yeah, and to say his last official match was WrestleMania nineteen. Um, yeah, nineteen against Rock. That was. Uh, Basically, his retirement match, but no, he, did, he had a good show, and it was a bit of a bro, it was a brawl. That's all it was, and uh, you know, he came back the night after and uh, gave uh, Vince McMahon that stunner, <laughs> what we all remember. Oh. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, um, I wouldn't be against seeing Stone Cold against Roman, but I don't know. It's uh, it's just interesting because, like, well, Roman's. Got a match against Owens this weekend at the Rumble, which Roman's going to win. I, I think there's like literally zero percent chance of uh, Kevin Owens becoming champion this weekend. Uh, but there's the plan for WrestleMania. It's rather going to be Cody. It's going to be against The Rock. The Rock is saying that oh, he's not in shape or anything like that, even though the guy lives in the gym. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting to hear this uh, bit of news uh, come out. Well, they need an attraction. It's WrestleMania. Mm. So, what about that uh, Logan Paul fella? Is he going to show up? Possibly, but Journey's match with uh, Roman, he picked, uh, I forgot what type of injury he got, but he picked up like a nasty injury. Uh, well, he tore uh, his ACL, didn't he? Tore his knee that's shot. right. Something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. A fair play to the guy. He was entertaining in the ring and, you know, he put in a good effort. I will give him credit. Um, so it'd be interesting what they do with him going forward because uh, he is signed by WWE. So um, it will be interesting to see going forward with that. But besides that, like I said, it's Raw 30 tonight. Uh, Jonah should be there tonight. So hopefully he's uh, representing. Uh, told him to take a big sign with him. So. Might see him on TV tonight. Right. I think we got a load of Super Chats already. We should probably get to them before. uh... Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, Here you go, Renee. I sent you this clip. Uh, Did you see Kato and Okada? 
Kaito, yes. Kaito. Uh, I said it before and I'll say it again. He is the future of, definitely future of Noah. And uh, I could see they're actually having a singles match at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, was it either tonight, I think, possibly? Possibly. Or next week? Yeah. So I definitely want to catch that when I told him I'd watch it. And uh, I can't. Oh, you friends with him? Was that? You friends with him, yeah. Very good friends, yeah. Oh, cool. When he came on um, excursion, he came to Canada and we were on the same tours together. And uh, we had some matches when he was young and I gave him a few uh, a few tips and uh, he never forgot it. So, oh, cool. Uh, he's a stud, man. And um, I'm proud of him. So let's get to the next question. Yep. Uh, let's see here. We need a let's get to some super chats t shirt. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Actually, uh, please go visit the uh, shop zone that we have here at the cafe. I got to get rid of some of these t shirts. Actually, didn't Paul say that when he did that show? The other week that all the fans were at, tell them about the about the YouTube show. Oh, the, some of the wrestlers, not just the fans, the wrestlers too, because uh, he done a seminar as well. Okay, and um, you know it's for Ricardo Rodriguez, but yes, uh, a lot, lot of the boys and girls said as well. Uh, like we watch the show, we love it. So um, we're over, brother. <laughs> uh, I gotta send them. I'm gonna send them some of the shirts so he can sell on his indie shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, funny enough, I want to ask you this as well. Actually, Cherry Pepsi Man, uh, so the new WWE game, they they do like a showcase mode, showing you like the best matches of this guy's career, or like you know pivotal moments. So okay. the next mode is going to be about John Cena. Okay. Uh, are you in it, Renee, or have you been contacted from WWE 2K? <laughs> I have not, no. but uh, I I was contacted. By the WWE, well, an agent contacted someone that I I've known for years, and that person contacted me. But uh, it's not in the cards. I'm sorry, everyone. But yes, they. I did. Me and me and Jen, me and Jenna did keep that a secret as well. So if we're letting yeah. you break the news. <laughs> no, we're gonna still keep it a secret. But yeah, there was talks of anyway. Next question. But but now uh, quite a few people said they would like to see that match like you and Cena Judgment Day because obviously that was his first title defense on a pay-per-view. So, yeah. And the building um, was pulled out and it did 300,000 yeah. buys. Well, they're actually one of the uh, pre-order bonuses is a OVW pack and it's o prototype Cena, OVW Orton, with Fire Finn Batista and like OVW Rock Lesnar. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, it's a shame they don't, you know, a few more of the guys like yourself, Shelton, um, you know, boat bowling services, same like often again. A, a youth generation pack it was uh, me, Conway, Shelton, Cena, uh, and Charlie Haas. Hmm. It was a special um, toy pack. It might have been just for Canada. My mom bought it actually. <laughs> All right, cool. I have it over at her house. Uh, Dante, thank you. Uh, Renee, any advice when it comes to investing in property and has any of your tenants marked out knowing you own the property you have? That's a good question. Funny you just said that, yeah. So now I'm taking a bigger role, like um, collecting rents and stuff. And, and I went over, um, it was like two days ago, to get some checks. And uh, they're an older couple. And then... They're like, which one are you? Because I have a, a brother. And they're like, oh, you're the one that wrestled. I go, yeah, and I own this building. And they're like, oh. And the woman said, yeah. So, yeah, any problems? You got a contact. I go, I guess so. So, yeah. So that's my new endeavor now is taking care of the rental properties, which can mm -hmm. be a headache, but uh, it's a very lucrative business. So, cool. When you say you go around uh, collecting the rents like you're the muscle, <laughs> like pay me now. <laughs> no, the majority of our tenants are elderly, so right, yeah. 
But Christ, man, we've had some tenants in our buildings for 40 years. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. My neighbor, I... he was in the building for 12 years. He just passed away. so And he was a heavy smoker, so we had to go clean it. And that's another headache. Got to change air filters and repaint it. And yeah. But yep. that's a part of the part of the job. Right. Uh, Carter, thank you for the donation. Uh, they should have Russo there at Raw 30. Austin would have been great, but someone had to write him on the beer truck and get him sacrificed by Taker. Uh, Renee, do you have a favorite writer? Thoughts? Favorite writer? I'm trying to think who was there. Gerwitz. Uh, one, Gerwitz, yeah, I thought he was like really talented. Like, I'm not a fan of writers in wrestling at all, mm. but WWE is a total different animal. You know, it's a TV show. It's not a wrestling show, right? But Gerwitz, he, he, he was really talented and came up with a lot of good stuff. Like, a lot of stuff that Cena would do, he would come up with. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know he done a lot with um, Edge and Christian as well. Like, him and Edge and Christian was, like, really good friends. Hmm. And I think they would give him like toys and figures as well. Oh, they would bring him gifts. Yeah, they got, heat, they got heat for that when I first got there. Really? Yeah, got heat from the other boys, like they were kiss asses or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. No, they're just Plain. Canadian, man. Canadian hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. That helped in their careers as well. End of the day, <laughs> they didn't harm. Well, them. No, Edge was penciled in from the get go. They knew they were going to win. Like we know, Christian's obviously mega talented. Are you surprised that Christian got just as good as a push as, as well as obviously Edge a lot bigger? But safe to say, Christian had a good push in that company as well. Were you surprised he did? Surprised he got a push? Got his push as much as he, as he did because traditionally, we all know you know with tag teams when they split up, one's a Shawn Michaels and the other one's always a Genetti. Well, yeah. Edge and Christians won a few tag teams where both, uh, you know, tag partners actually both had great careers and both became world champions. What um, what championship did he win? ECW. Oh, Christian. Hey, ECW. He held the world title as well. Did he? Yes. Yeah, so so um, when Edge retired after WrestleMania twenty seven, mm. um. The title was vacant, so it was a feud between Del Rio and uh, Christian, and uh, Christian won it in a ladder match. And then that summer, he had a really, really good feud with Randy Orton. I recommend people watching it. And um, yeah, he held the world title a couple of times. And and this was after he returned from TNA. When he was in TNA, you know, he held the NWA TNA title. So yeah, he had a good push in uh, WWE as well. Like so, like, like I said. Not many tag teams do you see where both stars becomes world champions, but they're one of. I'm trying yeah. to think. Oh, no, Christian, many everybody, more. Everybody liked him, and you can't deny his uh, his abilities because he's extremely talented. He's a pretty good talker too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, cool. uh, wrestling Fight Club updates about the show in Montreal and which Fed. Um. Yeah. So I contacted the guy, and when someone says, "Oh, he just messaged me," I'm gonna get oh, my right, payment. Yeah. I'm gonna get my payment tomorrow, okay? And it's Alliance de Lutte Canadienne, uh, Canadian Wrestling Alliance. Nice. So great news in the cafe. Was that? Breaking news in the cafe exclusive. Breaking news. So, I'll, well, again, once I get the payment, because I was supposed to get the payment on a Friday, and then I was supposed to get it on a Monday, and then I was supposed to get it last week. So, I'll let you know. But that's the name of the promotion uh, Alliance de Lutte Canadienne, March 3rd and possibly March 4th. So, awesome. And, uh, 275 people, 279 people in the chat. Thank you, everyone. If you could, uh, Hit that like button. We're almost at 15k. I think we're about 110, 112 off subscribers. So uh, 
if you're new to the show and you've not subscribed, please do so if you're enjoying it. And if you're a long-time listener who hasn't subscribed yet, please do. It helps us out. So uh, we're nearly at 15K. Al- algorithm. 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 Dana Christie, thank you so much, fellow Canadian. I can tell by the CA. <laughs> Canadians just love each other, don't they? No, not at all. I, f- I thought you do. Like, I feel like all Canadians are like, even though it's a big country, all Canadians is like really close. No, if we see each other abroad, it's usually like, hey, hey, where are you from? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fix stream. Oh, it's got them. There we go. There we go. Hi, team. Stuck Aiken Waterman music. Yay or nay? I have no idea what that is, Fixtrum. Do you, James? Dennis, Wa- Dennis Waterman? Oh, Pete Waterman? <laughs> so you're talking about... Pete Waterman was a producer, though, not as a singer. Unless the music he produced, which he produced like Kylie Minogue. <laughs> so uh, unless I'm way off... Uh... Watch my 666. Evening, lads. You see the retro titles for tonight? Uh, I, uh, oh, um, do you mean, uh, uh, for some reason, I thought you meant championships. Do you mean like the actual uh, graphics, what they're using for the show? Uh, yeah, so you know the old 90s Royals War uh, logo, what, they've been, what, they've, what they used to use back in the Attitude Era? Yeah. So because it's fair, it's Raw is XXX. And I'm like, well, even if it's a TV, it's, it's a PG show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the only problem Actually, is I, might, gonna... I might tune in for that tonight yeah I am going to watch it um, definitely I haven't watched any wrestling for a while um, mm-hmm. not since the last WWE pay-per-view and, uh, but I will watch it it's good to see the legends show up uh, so yeah it'll be interesting to see what. and like I said it's pretty much the raw go home show for the rumble so hopefully something happens that yeah, should be a really good rating, then. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Evans, thank you for the donation. Sound is a pound. <laughs> oh, Dana Christie again, thank you. Uh, hey, Renee, out of curiosity, how many Grand Prix rings uh, were constructed by your father? Rumor has it there was five made. Is there any truth to that? Uh, possibly, yeah. <laughs> Because I know we had one ring that was left on Prince Edward Island because just the hassle of... Because Prince Edward Island, at one point in time, they constructed a bridge now, but before you had to take a ferry to get over there. And uh, so they left... It was in Montague PEI. They actually left the ring there. Then we had one for studio wrestling, which was a short boy with a short post. And then he had... Well, at one point he had two crews going, so he had two. So yeah, probably four or five, definitely. How much are rings? Um, well, it depends where you get it. I mean, I think High Spots was selling theirs for like ten thousand, I think. I'm not right. Mistaken. Yeah, but you can get one constructed yourself, probably for cheaper. Right. It's yeah. one question. It's the question I've never actually asked. <laughs> so, uh, see if like, your father, Adam, I thought I'll ask. Uh, Jordan Spooner, thank you for the five pound, uh, five dollar donation. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, let's see here. Um, oops, there we go. David, any Kane stories? Was he easy to work with? Love Glenn Jacobs, and yes, extremely easy. Uh, yeah, I consider him one of the a locker room leader, but a guy who's easier to talk to than say Undertaker, for me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but cool. yeah, very easy. Seven seven three is life. Hopefully, Joe Nair does bring a Cafe de Rene sign. Otherwise, he's going to have heat with the boys. <laughs> Wait, that's right. That's true. He will have heat. You brought one. You and your kids brought one when you went to the. Uh... Clash. Was it Wales, right? That's where they held it? Yeah. Black yeah. duct tape shines up so well on signs, I didn't realize. Yeah, but there was like 50,000 people there, so the chance of someone actually seeing it. Oh, I'm sure if Kevin Dunn's in the truck, he'll say, uh, pan out, uh, get away from that sign. The funny <laughs> thing was, there wasn't that many signs. 
Remember back in the Attitude Era? That's I mean, all it was with science. <laughs> all it was with science. And I was actually watching uh, Devin, uh, Devin's channel, and he was making a, con a comparison from the ratings – like the first week of January compared to the 98 first week of January. Oh yeah. my God. Like all the rampage dynamite raw SmackDown combined didn't even equal three quarters of what raw did back then. My man. Isn't that crazy? Like thunder, which was a, considered a secondary show was doing a 3.7. Wow, I didn't realize he was doing that good well on that. Right. Uh, remember, I think they still have WWF main event, right? Which was like a highlight show. Was doing uh, it. right? Yeah. Right in live wire. They were doing 1.0. And ladies and gentlemen, he's not here yet. <laughs> he's not here. Struggling he's to there. get Wi-Fi. We're looking at a black screen. Here we go. Look to the next question. Uh, here we go. Uh, thank you, Alan Jackson. Uh, hey guys, love the show. WrestleMania 20 was my favorite event ever. Uh, what was it like uh, being a part of that, Renee? And what was the reaction to the main event? Thanks, guys. That's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it was a whole week in uh, New York City, and I trained my ass off for that. I was in the gym twice a day. And main event was was awesome. Um, and it was that week that Vince made the call to give me the big push because after that is when I was like the number one draft pick on the, the following Raw. And I started the angle with Cena. And look at Paul London. And we can't hear you, buddy. There's no... Yeah, and of course he has to eat. That's okay. He needs a nutrition. And he's gone. <laughs> well, that's Paul London, everyone. That's Paul London, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. What was your reaction to when um, Benoit won the title? Because, well, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was the first time someone tapped out in the main event of WrestleMania. I think it was the first time. Well, hold on. Did Edge win the heavyweight championship before Chris? No. So that would be the first Canadian outside of Bret Hart, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, to actually win a title at WrestleMania, win the main, main uh, win the world title at main, uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, or I know Jericho. Jericho walked into WrestleMania as oh, champion, okay. or Triple H beat him. Um, but but yeah. Besides Brett, I think it was the first, you know, it's the second time a Canadian walked in and won the title. And oh, let me correct you Jericho and Triple H were on last, they weren't the main event. Well, that's true. <laughs> I was holding a rock, buddy. Yeah. Um, but no, it was great stuff. Um, uh, Zachary Foster, uh, Paul's still waiting. I'm just waiting for him to get a good signal with Adam. Um, who was the one backstage that never wanted to talk wrestling on the road? For example, who wanted to talk about stuff like classic literature? LOL. Bob Hawley and Billy Gunn. They didn't want to talk wrestling at all. Look who it is. Do we have sound? Nope. <laughs> oh, you got to plug in the headphones. So it's okay. We can read your lips. <laughs> we can read your lips. We can sign language. Oh, fuck. Is he cutting a promo on me? <laughs> you got <laughs> to plug it in, though. You got to reboot your router, maybe? I could buy it. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> Always, even without sound, he's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just stand there and make faces. That's okay. Yeah. Let's get to the next question. Oh. In. God damn it. There we go. There we go. Can you hear me? We can hear you. 
No, now we can't hear you. Maybe it's those shitty, shitty headset phones you're wearing. There we go, buddy. <laughs> you're breaking up. God, you're... mother. Stop, mother. Maybe you gotta like. You're... Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Testing, yeah. Test. There we go. Oh, no. Can you really? Yeah, don't move your computer because it might. Is it your phone or your? Oh, yeah. Uh... Like Festus. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Huh? How you doing? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, it's always good to talk to you guys. So wait, you, you think I need the nutrition? I heard that, actually. I heard that little jab, man. You know, and I am trying to eat nutritious. I think it's important for everybody to take care of it. You're eating as usual. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... Um, what are you eating, buddy? Non-gluten crackers? No, I finished those. I did finish those last night. Uh, there's just some simple popcorn. Oh, popcorn. Well, that's... I I heard popcorn is like causes cancer. Microwave of popcorn. Really? Yeah. Actually, you know what? What doesn't cause cancer? In this yeah, exactly, dude. I'd have to have like three of these a day. Every right. day. Yeah, times are no. tough, right, Phil? Dwayne says it's good, man. I talked to him the other day. He was oh, like, yo... You? Eat that fucking popcorn, man. Look at me, dog. That's he right. goes, yeah. So you and DJ are, are close? Oh, dude. <laughs> Tight. Highly <laughs> long. Oh, well, we got some more. What? What did you say? <laughs> he goes, you only have seven bucks? Come aboard. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the famous story, right? James watches Young Rock, doesn't don't you, James? No, I haven't. I still haven't watched it. I'm gonna have to get around to watching it. I've heard good things. You have heard good things. Hmm. Like well, what? Shit, it gets better ratings than wrestling, doesn't it? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks funny, like a kind of lampoon. Like I can't believe I wouldn't. I would like to think that they don't think that they're casting spot on. I would like to think it's kind of a purposely like an off casting a bit some of them oh, seem yeah. to be pretty good but some of them you just like oh my god anyways how you guys been living the uh fuck man we're currently in a snowstorm up here 35 centimeters which is like what 20 some inches yeah yeah really fun really good time shoveling snow my friend but you're from Texas. You guys know. That's so you can do like the Rocky Four workout. Hell yeah. Dude, when yeah. I was like a teenager chasing that dream, I would I would walk through snowstorms to get to the gym. I remember you told me that. You had the protein oh, jug yeah. in one hand and the books in the other. Well, no, that was high school. I'm talking about like we'd have snowstorms where the whole town was shut down, like literally yeah. shut down. You couldn't drive, so I would walk with my Zubas and winter boots and drive. <laughs> with yeah. the Zubas, the Zubas were tucked into the boots, right? Fucking hey. And yeah, I you don't want to get the ankles wet. I would walk about half a mile through through the snow just because the gym was a 24 hour key system gym. The one I brought you to. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. I bruised my face on a barbell, turning around into it. It's hardcore, buddy. It's hardcore up here. I have like a black eye. <laughs> Before show up at the house show with a black eye. What happened? Uh, yeah, Trina and Renee's gym, you know. This is a Hulk Hogan WrestleMania 9 injury. <laughs> we got some more questions here we got to get to. Tony's channel. Thank you. Speaking of nutrition, what are Renee's macros? Guesstimate, at least. Uh, what do you mean by macros, dude? You don't know, bro? No, bro. Someone ain't watching UFC. Someone ain't dieting, bro. Someone ain't sacrificing. So, Dude, when I was a kid, like now gluten is a thing. Like I never heard about gluten. And then it's real deal, like, man. It's yeah. real deal. It'll fuck you up. It was impact carbs and I don't know. 
total nonstop yeah. carbs. Yeah, dude, I eat now yeah. with the inflation and the price of food, I've cut down to about five meals a day. I do three meals like a normal person plus two protein shakes. I get complex cars and about 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal. For years and years and years, you heard you need at least 1.5 grams or 2 grams of protein. In reality, you probably need about 0.7 or 0.8. I discovered that when I lived in Japan because the portions are so much smaller over there. That I okay, so that, it's as though, you, you know, we are connected cosmically, the three of us. Um, I was going to ask you, did you ever take your protein to Japan or did you just rely on their product there tell me about oh, that. No, I, uh, when i worked for all japan the young boys would smuggle pro because they got all their protein for free they would yeah. what they're smugglers they smuggle. no no they were sponsored they were spon oh, by sponsored by power <laughs> protein so they would Neither always like smuggle it why smoke it well, how they, they, they weren't supposed to but they would always give me their protein and stuff and then Aki Bono, remember him? He was a part of WrestleMania, the sumo match. With, yeah. He would get his stuff off the Army base, the American Army base, because his kids went to school there. So I would get all the American protein there for, like, cost price and supplements and stuff. But what, then this what, last what time, want? Noah. Uh-huh. What was your kind of go-to protein? Because – Muscle tech. Back in the day, muscle milk had some good flavor. <laughs> oh man, isn't that that stuff can't be like good for you because it tastes so good. Sure uh, can. Yeah. They don't. Yeah, they don't really put it out there anymore. But anyways, yeah. I was just curious. I mean, like we know, uh, they're sponsored by Muscle Tech, which is a Canadian base, and uh, so we had all the free protein we wanted and stuff. So. You remember Myoplex? Myoplex, I believe that was EAS. Yeah, I was. Yeah, EAS, and then we'd have we'd every, before tours like or whatever, especially like tours of Japan. I remember always getting the travel size box that had the packets, and you yeah. would just put and then all you could those put a little bit of water, just a little bit of water, and turn it into like a protein pudding. Yeah, I never did that, but oh. I did use a shaker or do the old school uh, Benoit. Put it in your mouth dry. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I was just curious, like if if because I would have I wouldn't be surprised that you would seem like to me like you would take your own, but I don't even know if they make they have to make protein packs like that still or something that's easier to travel with, but yeah. Probably no, I learned your... real quick it's it's better to eat real food than any type of protein powder or something. Yeah. Like I remember I, they were like uh no, go ahead, please. You're not as... No, I'm not as hardcore as I used to be as far as, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're only tanning, like, once a day now, or what? No, I don't tan anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when I start getting freckles all over your body and all these guys are getting diagnosed with skin cancers and stuff, like Brett, Austin, even Devin, my buddy Hannibal, he got right? skin cancer too. Yeah, he got it chopped off, but, I mean, it's like, shit. Jesus. I don't know if Flair had to get an operation because he was t on his eyes because he was tanning so much that it fucked up his eyes and shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you get those weird, symmetrical, weird tans like under your arm and your ass crack. and Right, my butt those... cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what we're talking about, James. Come on. Yeah, James, come huh? on, man. You know all about it, right? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Do I remember uh, working with Kenzo Suzuki? Yeah, I do. Okay, next question. <laughs> I do. He had a funny English. Like, he would always ask me about scorpions. Like, because I lived yeah, in Texas. We had a really so cool conversation because we used to ride together. We had a cool conversation about ghosts. Okay. He asked me if I ever seen ghosts. Because, you know, in Japan, there's a lot of ghost sightings, right? And he didn't mean, like, just the movie Ghost. He meant Ghost. Well, that too. Well, that too. It's his favorite movie. Okay. Uh, I love I Patrick Wayne. Yeah. I am handsome, <laughs> like a Tom Cruise. Um, yeah. He, Ghost has one of the best endings, by the way. When when Tony Goldwyn gets taken down by the evil spirits at the end. Ah. So good. 
But yeah, he told me the story about ghosts, how he saw his fan, his grandfather's ghost, but it was just his upper torso. Yeah, uh, so that's a big thing in Japan. Ghosts. Sightings After he put in a VHS tape that he mysteriously found. <laughs> Well, it was the scene with Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze making that vase. You know, <laughs> iconic scene. Well, they spoofed that in, like Hot Shots or something, part two. Yeah, <laughs> right. With, uh, was it, or was it Nike Gun or something? Nike Gun, I think. It was one Nike of those Gun. spoofed that spot. <laughs> I haven't watched that one for a while. Uh, Loaded Weapon with Amelia Rest oh, of Us. So good. Yeah, Loaded Weapon's great. I haven't watched it for ages. With the uh, Girl Scout cookies. Tim Curry. That's right. Uh, Y2 Tanner, thank you. Uh, hello, James and Renee. I have a question about bodybuilding. Why are you asking me? Uh, so are you, Jade. I can't lift heavy at all, but would like to. Can Renee please give me advice on how to get bigger and how long does it take to notice again? Eat, eat. Eat 85% is nutrition. You are what you eat. Uh, how long? Give yourself three months to start seeing any, any change. Consistency, time your meals, eat six, is six meals a day minimum. If you, you don't see anything, eat seven, nothing, eat eight. You got to eat food. Um, were you a calorie counter, Renee? Like, would you? Were you no, you I was a protein carb counter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and ideally, it's I, like a, a, a gram of protein per pound of body weight, right? Yeah, that's that was for the longest time. It was always a gram per pound. But in reality, you probably only need about 0. 0.7 or 0. 0.8. Oh, okay. Because yeah. 0.7 and 0. 0.8 is easier to fraction out in powder. So, yeah, that makes sense. Right. But it's like, uh, you know how nothing in life disappears, it just transforms. Any unburned calorie will transform into fat, whether it's protein or carbohydrates or sugar or whatever, right? So, yeah, you can Any get Any unburned with... grandpa torso won't disappear either. It'll just keep right. reappearing. That's it. You're right. Absolutely right. But, uh, yeah, you want to gain weight, you got to eat lean proteins, complex carbohydrates, Fats also important, but stay away from saturated fats. Stick with your uh, monostrated and polystrated fats, the good fats, like nuts. Nuts in your mouth, right, Hoovy? Oh, this is fucking my favorite snack. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Wrestling Fight Club, Raw is no longer PG. It's TV 14, James. All right. Oh shit! It's the lambs. He's got the lambs on. The look at knees, as we used they have to say. A bad it. reflection on him. What was that yeah. last question? Uh, PG fourteen games. Games. Yep. Games. Games. Who wants a PG fourteen game? <laughs> I mean, come on. They're talking about raw, dude. Who wants a PG fourteen raw? I mean, come on. So what's the difference? Like, what do they do? Are they showing, like, more skin? No difference. I barely it? watched it, but there's no difference. I think they're allowed to say bitch more. Ooh. Shit. Um, Th Thomas uh, Burns, have you guys give any more thought about a Patreon? Have we given any more thought about Patreon, Renee? Paul, oh. have we given any more thought about Patreon? Who, Del Rio? No, no. The actual Patreon where they sign up and pay a monthly fee. I think we oh, should right. consider that maybe when we have more subscribers, because I mean, we can't ask Rex Gardner and Fix Stream Bob to pay a hundred dollars a month each. Don't forget Schmear. Uh Bagel Topper Schmear. Are you in the house, Bagel Topper? We're looking for oh. you, pal. I think he is. Fix Stream, we already got him on. Renate, do you regret never working for her Babrams? Well, not really, considering I was about I don't know, eight years old. Could have um, done it. Yeah, I mean, sure. My dad taught me a hip toss when I was six, you know, so <laughs> I could have. And he was so coked out, um, Herb Abrams was. Dad? Oh, I was like, what? No, not my dad. Herb. Good old Herb. No. How old do you think I am, for fuck's sakes? Jesus. I think it's the fact that they saw me on TV at such a young age that I've yeah. you know what I mean? That must be what it is, right? I looked old. And then they too. saw Russell Massacre and they were like, this guy's 
He's he's everywhere. So you saw the trailer for Wrestle Massacre? Hell oh, yeah! yeah. That. <laughs> We're trying to find copies of it. We're going to review it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Renee, I got a copy here. Renee, you are the best actor in the movie. Right? Oh, That's like being the nicest That's guy. In prison. I was like, he's the only one that looks like just natural. And you have a yeah. gun. In if you want to see Renee DePree with a gun, check out Wrestle Massacre. Yeah. Now, yeah. Renee. Flea ah. Market near you at the bottom of the bin. Wrestle Massacre. No. Are you kidding? I, That's yeah, better than yeah, half the no. crap at Walmart. Um, did you say <laughs> Renee? Again? Right, here's a question now. You, you you have a sex scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. Is it with the blonde or is it with the big chick? It's the redheaded girl. Is that the big chick, Paul? She has like her ass out in the film. <laughs> in the, in the beginning, the guy's like perfect through the window. This girl was petite. What? Cute little was there an intimacy coordinator? What? Was there an intimacy coordinator? No, there was like three dudes watching us. <laughs> Were there protective cups? She was completely nude. <laughs> all right. Yeah. She's like all game for it. <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine I mean, how many perverts. Some people are involved. comfortable, you know? More power to them. Yeah. I don't know if I could. That would be nerve wracking, man. I don't know. Especially when your first scene you ever do for your first film you ever do. Yeah. Actually, oh, no. Uh, that's, that's not the, the first, first movie. That's watched. not the first movie you've done. <laughs> What are you talking about? Maybe when you're about 15, 16, what I've, I meant, oh, what I found. Oh, Jesus Christ. Paul, if you want to see a masterpiece as a movie of Renee when he's like 15. <laughs> I got to see it. I, oh, I, got, I think the full movie's available. Le Lunatic, it's French for the lunatics. And my French was so bad because I have a distinct, especially back then, they actually dubbed over my voice because my French was so bad. And um, they had caught, like, I had started to get, like, popular with my wrestling, right, with my dad and stuff. So my name got out there, and they they contacted me to do this fucking thing. And I hated doing it, dude. I hated doing it. But it was a good payday for a 15-year-old. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to learn more French or something? Or No, it's just because, like, where I'm from since, like, the English and French are mixed so our French is like, we call it Fringlish, half French, half English. So actually, yeah. when I started tagging with Sly and traveling with Sly, my French got a whole lot better. And then when I was hanging out with Maris, because uh, we would hang out a lot all the time, my French got really good. And then touring France, when I did do media for them, like I put on like proper French and stuff. So I think my French now is better than when I was a kid. But I have no accent, right? So. No, I admire that. That's a language I'd like to learn for sure. Like what, German? Both. Yeah. Yeah, it's those, those two. But yeah, German especially, but those two I've always told myself, you got to learn this. Yeah. I took French in high school, but... It, uh, How'd that work out for you? <laughs> it's like one semester. Oh, she was a, <laughs> she was a demon. The teacher was a demon? Yeah. Uh, the wrestle guy. You got any stories with the Vato in my pro or Vato in my profile pic? Eddie Guerrero. Oh shit, yeah. Paul, you start. Why me? Because James- uh, you haven't answered a question yet. And I gotta I go mean- to the bathroom. I'll be right back, guys. It's all you, Paul London. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said, I've said a few things about Eddie, but he was obviously, to me, he was the leader of the locker room. He was great. You know, Ditto. I was, of course, I didn't have to work with him for, um, or to work with him in tags at house shows, um, never teaming with him, but, you know, against him, Ray and I teamed against him and Chavo at several house shows. We did a couple loops like that. And I was always um, it's surreal, you know, especially having watched him growing up. 
Uh, but he just, yeah, he always just was the one who you could actually go to with advice or, you know, for advice or if you had questions or anything of that nature. And, um, he'd always be so forthcoming with it, you know, just the advice and everything. And I think part of it was, you know, that I'm a Texas guy and that, you know, I'm half Mexican. I think like, you know, obviously that kind of, um, we can speak, you know, differently to each other. We have that connection. And I think it's similar to, uh, anyone, you know, with Latin heritage, it's, it's, you know, there is kind of a, I don't want to say brotherhood, you know, sisterhood. There's that connection. Um, Did he um, recommend you uh, for that singles match on SmackDown? Because that was a pretty good match. Yeah, apparently he did. He did. And um, that was another thing that was just really up there. It's like one of the, definitely one of the top things I've ever been able to be a part of in wrestling just to even be in the ring with them um, because you're getting advice on how to work your matches, you know, through him, but then to actually apply a lot of that or as much of it as you can with him in the ring with him. It's um, it's incredible. I never had an experience like that since or to that point. It's truly one of the kind of experience, um, especially because, you know, on TV days, you're, usually having to think and kind of plan out bit by bit for commercial breaks and timing and all these things. Um, and the announcers, you know, well, even though they usually weren't talking about my matches, but this match, you know, they're very much, they're talking about Eddie's personality and uh, the intensity and all this stuff that is leading into his, his uh, big, big push that was going on at the time. But he, we didn't really call him much of anything. He just was, you know, more along the lines of what, you know, if I do this, would you be able to? Yeah. If I do this, would you be able? Yeah, like for sure, you know, like whatever you need. Okay. And then we kind of had the finish, and the rest of it was really just called on the on the fly. I mean, me listening to him. Um, traditionally, when you know, calling in the ring was most common. The heel would lead the match and, you know, cause he's on top for most of the match, but it was usually the, usually the veteran um, and or the heel, but usually the person with the most experience call the match. And, um, but now it's just, it's, it's over called you know, every little bit into where it's there's workers are so much in their heads that what they're actually doing doesn't even have that, that great of, there's no believability a lot of times, you know, even just like, if you look at a lockup, like that's something that I, I stress a lot when I do seminars, lockups and headlocks, because when all goes to shit, those are things that you can always get right back to that I'm are, Kind of, yeah, exactly. Kind of an embodiment of wrestling. And, um, you know, because even if you look at like amateur wrestling, obviously, and especially like Greco Roman, it's all upper body. There are going to be lockups. There are going to be lockups. Um, and so, but a lot of times they're thinking so much about A, B, C, D, E, F, G that the lockup is, this just looks like shit. And you're thinking, I'm supposed to believe this? The very first thing I don't even believe, you know. Um, or they'll get into like a lockup, headlock. Huh? Prime example of that is that AEW match when the guy was knocked the fuck out in the middle of the ring and he stayed oh, there for like man, four that minutes. Still just, that's me. Alex they Reynolds, I think. They got lost. They had to go through their routine. Meanwhile, one of your fellow wrestlers is potentially brain dead. You know, you don't know Are how you talking about that man? Yeah. You know, yeah, and he gets dragged yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. While he's lying there. They're just yeah. going through their routine. What happens if one of them would have slipped and fell around top of him again? And they can, you know, adding to the. And he claims, yeah. I like this guy, and he claims that he was just selling. He claims that he wasn't knocked out, but I'm sitting here thinking, really? um, 
Well, well just then you're in the wrong business. You should be acting and doing stuff like that because you you play the role of someone having a concussion better than I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, did you see – Um, uh, there was clips going on Twitter. This girl named Willow powerbombed this girl named Anna J through a table off the stage. Now, he had her up here. Now, she can't see where the – her face is buried into her crotch. She can't see where she's going. And you plan – like, I like to know the agent behind that. You thought that was a good idea. Did you see that, Paul? She completely missed it, and Paul's gone. She completely missed the table, and the poor girl smacked that on the concrete. Concrete. You know. Anyway. Crazy. Watch my 666, the classic Goldberg eats corn the long way sign. Do you remember that sign? I do not. Let's see. Do oh, what there? Is Paul coming back with his awesome Wi-Fi? <laughs> Hi, Re Renee. Seen you wearing a Organogram T-shirt. You still talk? No, that's my wife's company. We get all kinds of uh, marijuana. All right, Carol. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, we can hear you, but we can't see you. You're in darkness. Are you serious? What? Any A train or Albert stories? Um, <laughs> yeah, we hung out in Japan a few times. Uh, when he was in WWE, he was only there a short time before he got released, and I was on the Raw, and he was on SmackDown. Um, yeah, he's he's a cool guy. I think he is he still the head trainer or is no and now it's Sean, right? Um I think he's still one of the head ones. Uh, obviously I would say Sean's the head head one, but he's probably right below Sean, I would say. Yeah, actually talking about what Paul just mentioned about like little things that make a big difference. I think Lance Storm had Lance Storm had posted something on Twitter about about believable pins. And you're pinning someone, you know, and he had a, a picture of Umaga who clearly had his body over the shoulders and his hand over the guy's head, which would, you know, and then you had a train who was just lying on the guy's torso. You know, mm. you're pinning somebody, you got to treat it like a shoot. What are you trying to do? You're trying to pin the person's shoulders to the mat. So, so many times you'll see these pinfalls, like, uh, the best was like Regal and Finley when they would drive their form across the person's, you know, treat it like a shoot. You put your, your body yeah. weight across the shoulders and put pressure against the person's head so you can't kick out, right? Right. Just little. Are you there, Paul? You're frozen. God. Fixed dream. Let me know when I unfreeze because I, I, to me, this all looks fine. I can hear you all, but. If I'm just gonna be some frozen freak, then I'm yeah. out of here. No, I'm kidding. I'll just I'll try it again. But let you me want know. Want to lend some money so you can get yourself a proper laptop? <laughs> I'll do that. For I don't you, need technology running my life, man. It's a fucking <laughs> laptop, bro. You and James both invest in a laptop. That's what I did. It's a beautiful. Are investment. you kidding? So that's where oh. the funds have been going. I'm kidding. Listen, um, I got my first phone I, since 2008, no, three months ago, all right? And it's been on my dresser drawer for the last six <laughs> weeks uncharged. That's how much I use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we can I see get you're a, increased, but your timing's off. I'm on frozen. Timing's off? God. James is over it. He's over it. Now I'm frozen. And well, you, James, if you can hear me, that's all that matters, man. Yeah, but your face, your face looks like you have you're toothless. Oh, that's see the that's video no of King Charles breakdancing. I don't know. I didn't see that. Did you see that? You're from England. No, no. didn't see it. Didn't see it. Sorry. Champ thoughts on Cena being the two K twenty three cover star. Is he on the cover? Yep, he's got three different covers. 
maybe that shows a lack of uh, a lack of uh, star power, perhaps. Star yeah. power. Same value. And then did they make that decision when Vince got back? That must have been made before. So you know who makes the final call and all that stuff. It's all Vince. He has the final mm. say. Cena, of course. Well, last, yeah. Well, last year it was um, Rey Mysterio was on the one cover. Then on the special edition, it was the uh, NWO. And and NWO. Uh, Ryan Evans, thank you. Uh, did you get on with Benoit before the tragedy? I did. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. Uh, your, your face. It's scary. Yeah. Did, did you, you guys, guys see the videos of Derry Young Dad being caught being a... Pre no, I didn't see this. Did you? They even get Darren Young on the phone crazy. What? I thought I saw the video of Darren Young. No, no. What? Who is the guy? Oh, was that the? Um, he was in a fight in the gym. He got in a fight with a guy in the gym, and the police arrested him. The Velveteen Dream. What? Just recently? Yeah, I saw that video. He got. He was in the gym working out. Then he got in a fight with the, one of the staff members. Right. And then the, they called the police and they arrested him. And then he was, I don't know what you're saying, that he was a WWE superstar. Oh, then there was that other <laughs> kid who got in a fight. He was he got in a fight with his boyfriend. And then he was on camera, like, saying, oh, I'm a WWE superstar. I'm world. world Jay Cutlass. Yeah, <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to get Darren back. Young, Darren Young, isn't that he worked? Oh, fuck. Paul's gone again. Uh, Darren Young, which one's he? He was in Nexus. Tagged with uh, Titus Neo. He came out as gay. Oh, he works He's for Japan? New Japan Strong, he works for, doesn't he? Okay, so his dad got caught being a, like a child molester? Is that it? Apparently. Fuck, I didn't see that. And when's Kid Cash coming back? Soon. I'd like to have Cash back on. How about you, James? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. That's the last time we had them when we had them with Paul, and that must have been. It was this summer. Late summer. Yeah, we'll have to bring him back. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, like, oh, well, didn't he just do an interview with, um, um, what's the guy's name? Which one? The guy, the guy, uh, the Canadian guy that does all the videos. Does that work? We had him Plate. Who? Van Fleet. Yeah, Van Fleet. He just did an interview with Van Fleet. All right. Yeah. Would you like to have Cash back on, Paul? That was always a fun time. Could Cash. Oh, yeah. I had to, I remember that was slipped in at the, at the end of that last question. And um, yeah, Cash is great. Yeah. I'd like to have him back on. Paul, what's your favorite UFC move? Um, guys, so many. Um, Probably the one, two, three. Uh, <clears throat> Kamara. It's an old sergeant. It's an old sergeant. Kamara is so overrated, bro. Dude, uh -huh. so overrated. No, I mean, there's so many. You know, I think the uh, the quadruple trachea choke is pretty good. Um, the arm swim up bar. There's a few good ones. Um, yeah. The anus blaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was just remembering a, an old joke a friend of mine told me. Old, old war buddy. Uh, old war yeah. Buddy. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, remember the viscera move? You'd like, get them down and... and Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call it? The visagra? Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, that's like... You want to wear someone down in UFC? Do that. You want to wear someone down in the fight? Do that. Like, that'll... That's... 
it's kind of like a ground sleeper. Okay. Yeah. I fucking love UFC, dude. My fucking bros right here with me. It's fucking tight. That's right. Jack Allen, what did you think to Stone Cold's Disturbed theme song? It's my favorite, actually. Shit's awesome. Uh, I didn't like it. I like the original. Glass breaks. You know, shit's going to hit the fan. I agree. That one, this, this is classic. The glass breaking. Yeah. One meal you could eat for the rest of your life. Chicken wings. From where? Animal, cra- animal crackers, Paul? No. What the fuck? Where do you... You get chicken wings, James. Um, anywhere. <laughs> I just love chicken wings. Damn, if that's my favorite part of a chicken. Anywhere. Nando's. Come on, Nando's. that's not true. I'm sure you've had wings before. Man, these suck. like these wings are tiny. Nando's is pretty good for chicken I've never wings. Never had the Nando's wings. They they do a thing called Wings Roulette, and it's like yeah. ten or twelve different wings, and it's all like different flavors or different spices. I don't know what's going Nando's. on. Pretty good. Paul, when you were in England, did you go to Nando's? I don't like it. You don't like Nando's? I don't think we can be friends anymore, Paul. <laughs> it's gone. He's got to get better Wi Fi or a better something. Big stream. Plow flat screens TVs cost less than ten dollars at Savers. Uh, Alan Jackson, what was Paul's reaction to the WrestleMania twenty main event? Alan Jackson, I must say, I love your name because that's one of my favorite country music artists, Chattahoochee. Uh, well, Paul, where is he? I have to save that one. I'm sure Paul loved it. I'll get back to that one in a minute. Working on the groovy thing. Uh, you've both been in video games and have both been turned to action figures. Did you find it weird, creepy, or cool? What's the process like? Uh, video games, I didn't see it till after I left WWE, to be honest. The, the check was amazing. Uh, turn into action figures, it's really cool at first. And the process is they put you in this machine, and there's like... Um, a rotating thing that takes photographs of your face like from every direction all around your head <clears throat> and it takes different shots and you gotta make different faces too so um but yeah getting your first action figure is like i mean it's surreal it's pretty cool yeah. did you have one what was your first one when you was with la resistance or when you was a singles a la resistance yeah, they made I think three different La Resistance because again we'd always change our color or four different La Resistance because we had the black tights, gold tights, red tights, and blue tights. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've got like ten action figures, and it's coming up to your twentieth uh, anniversary for your debut, isn't it? The uh, main roster debut of La Resistance in April. Yes. And we're planning on trying to get the band back together for a special 20-year anniversary reunion with myself and Sly and Rob Conway. So hopefully we can pull that through, and uh, that'd be great. And I've also finally had confirmation that I've booked the big guest, the, the big should we one. Say it or should we wait? It's up to you. Well, you booked them, so it's up to you. Yeah, it should be okay. So sure? it's over a month away still. <laughs> right, right. Well, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'll see how I feel. Uh, but very Maybe excited. Maybe we should make like a special video for that. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just very, very, very excited. This is this is one of them interviews. Like uh, I can't believe we'll be doing. Like especially me. So, um, well, especially me, uh, this is the biggest one for me because I grew up watching the guy, and uh, still to this day, if I want to be entertained, I'll put on one of his promos. Oh, yeah, Yeah. so uh, 
Yeah, so it's going to be a big one, guys, and it's going to be a live stream, so you you got plenty of opportunities to ask this guy a question, and I believe me, you won't want to miss it. Uh, Badias, thank you. Who in wrestling do you regret being nice to? That's Paul London. <laughs> he keeps screwing you over with his Wi-Fi. Jesus, Paul. I uh, run mine off. I no. run mine off my phone, as well. Was that? Like me, I, I have no connection issues at all, and I run it off my phone. It must be his Wi-Fi, unless he's like has a ten-year-old phone or something. I don't, I don't know because mine, mine's all you can eat data, so I just don't run out of internet. It's what unlimited. Year it? What year is it? Uh, this phone I got. Um, it's a two-year contract. It's so uh, I think I got it like nine months ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah, dude, um, I told you, I got my first cell phone since 2008, three months ago, and it's been sitting on my dresser drawer for the last six weeks. I don't use phone. My whole family lives on the phones. All my kids do. My wife does. We live. On Everybody the does. The world does, man. And it's fucked. <coughs> the worst is when you go to a gym. And the other oh, day yeah. I was in the gym. All right, there was about six of us because I try to go when there's nobody there. Six of us. I'm doing my. I'm doing supersets. I had a chance to superset three sets of my arms and uh, bicep, tricep, and I was looking around at the same time. I had time to do that, and everybody was there. The other five or six people were on their phones the whole time staring at me. Yeah. Yeah, you have to um, pack it away. I've started my diet today, uh, so there's a new gym that's open, so I might join them, and they're pretty cheap as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, I've had protein yogurt today, and tiny bit of pasta with uh, just mainly just bolognese sauce, but low fat. So but I promise is now I'm really hungry. Well, it's not so much I'm hungry. It's just the um, fucking, what's it called now? Cravings. So I'll just have to uh, be good. Uh, did you guys well, hear about you should, Honestly, you should eat more food. Two is not enough. That's what the sumo wrestlers would do, dude. They'd eat two meals a day and they'd load up. And that's why that's what helped them gain weight. Meal prep, James. Meal prep. Protein and carbohydrates and vegetables. At least four to five meals a day. But I can't open oh, go. Did you guys hear about the late Vince McMahon WhatsApp voice message? I can email it to you to listen. Yes. Um, extreme. Email it. You can email it. I'll try and get it up. Um, I don't know if I can get it up on here. Do you have like another phone or something? They're all flat. <laughs> the kids drain the battery on them. <laughs> so, uh, where's the tablet? Send it. What? Send it to James. James will send it to me, and I'm on a laptop, so I can open up a different screen and I can play it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can Renee or London lift up the big show? London can. I can't. <laughs> uh, Jericho said he'll like wrestling to be Olympic sport yeah we spoke about this a few weeks yeah, back and Jericho also said he got abducted by aliens and Jericho says a lot of things uh, call him in thoughts on Michiharu Misara any stories uh, one of the best I believe he was the second Tiger Mask uh, I think um, so yeah when I was working for Hustle, I was friends with Ricky Marvin, and Ricky Marvin was working for Noah. And he knew who I was, and he said to Ricky to say hello to me. I think I could have possibly joined Noah at that point in time if I would have went and met him. But uh, I went to All Japan instead. So, What was your favorite company in your time in Japan? Also was the easiest work, but I'd say all Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly because like Taio Kea, just hanging out with him every tour, man. And plus a lot of the guys that were there, like that's when Minoru Suzuki was there, but he was younger and a lot more than Masa Funaki. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time in all Japan. Wrestle one was good at first, but then the money got to shit, so I had to go. 
And then uh, Nola was fun too. Yeah. But I didn't tell you this. I woke up this morning. Remember I told you how I had those shocks going through my arms? I was yeah. last time I know I woke up this morning and the, I met, maybe the way I was sleeping with my neck, I felt the shocks go down my arm again. Wow. So I had the x-rays, nothing popped up, but there's definitely nerve damage or possibly herniated disc in my neck. So, um, well, though, fun fact, the original TNA six-sided ring was modeled after this circumference of Paul London's condoms. <laughs> Great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if Paul London can join us, it would be great. So I'm sure he would get a, a chuckle from that bagel topper. Schmear. Love having you on the channel, bud. And over 400 people in the chat. Thank you. For the, Thank uh... you, everybody. I'm sorry about Paul London. I'm going to send him money so he can buy a freaking laptop that works. Uh, let's see. James had Bubba. What do you mean, that Bubba? Who cares about Bubba? Uh, actually, I know who the... So someone's got, like, a account in the chat is uh, Bully Ray, Bubba Ray. I actually know who it is. So, Cody, I don't know why you keep doing it, but I know who you are. So... Uh, How do you know this stuff? So this guy messaged me ages ago that he wanted to be part of my podcast, and I said, I'll see. Uh, if I've, and I just didn't have any space, basically, but... He's a impact wrestling fanatic. Uh, he really is. Uh, so I'll give him credit for that. Well, I don't know. But yeah, so I don't know why you, of all the wrestlers, you could cosplay as Bully Ray. Really? So, you know, pick someone cooler. You know, Trey, <laughs> Miguel, someone like that. I don't know. They just re signed Frankie Kazarian. Uh, being, oh, do you know who turned up on Impact the other night? <laughs> so hmm. Santino signed with them. Ernest right. the Cat Miller showed up the other night. What? Really? Yeah. So random, I know. What, uh, is he gonna, like have a run, or is he just there for one appearance? No idea. I don't watch Impact. Um, no. So, uh, Fadius Harvey, thank you. Uh, where would you travel if you had a time machine? I'd travel back into the 1980s so I could work the territories. Like 1978. Like working in Japan in, in the late seventies and eighties. Mm. Oh my God, how great would that be? Oh well, it is what it is. I am outside, everyone. Uh, style and profile, and thank you. Uh, good day, boys. Good to be back on the show again. It's good to for you to come back. Uh, do you reckon Cafe Day Renee will be broadcasted out of a studio one day? Boys, moving up in the world. You could have a studio one day, Renee. I don't know. Will you? Plan on building one. In the yeah, next you're, time. yeah, you're a builder. You yeah. wanna? If I pay your flight, uh, if I pay your flight ticket to Canada, would you build me one? Uh, well, yeah, the cost of building the thing. There goes Renee. Cafe Day James stands alone. Are you there, pal? Yeah, I can't see you. Paul's back. <laughs> Paul's back. I can't see Paul. I can't see anyone. Why is it only me? What, what's happened to your thing? C click on the video. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Can't see yeah, you. Just, just, just keep, um, <clears throat> keep asking questions. I'll answer them. Questions for Paul, but uh, Paul, who pitched El Gran Luchador? Will he return? Uh, we'll ask Paul if he returns. Um, add books. Let's see. Um, right, uh, Salvatore. Um, Paul, what is the moral of the message of Perfect Weapon? Uh, Jeff could have killed Naka, but didn't. Is that message that vengeance begets nothing? Um, I've never seen the perfect weapon, so I can't comment on that, but I'm sure it's something we'll review on Cinemax soon, which um what do you call it? 
we're recording episode two this week, so uh, we're recording Warlock. So stay tuned, everyone. Uh, Chepsy Perry, Pepsi Man, uh, did you two think of Hogan? Uh, oh, what did the two of you think of the Hogan era TNA? I didn't watch it, so I can't tell you I was in Japan. Uh, it destroyed the company, basically. You think that was they killed the company? Oh, yeah. They uh, took it on the road, and th- th- there was no advertising. Like uh, AJ Styles, the interview, he said that I would do try and. It's just me left. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll tell you the story. So yeah, so um, AJ Styles done an interview where um, what do you call it? Um, he said, "Far would do interviews on these radio shows, and they'd be like, and the people would be asking them, it's like, oh, where did you, um, where you uh, wrestling? What night?' And it's like it would literally be the night after. He just said that when they t- took over, like there was no one advertising what we was doing on the road, and we lost so much money going back to four sides instead of six sides. That took away from TNA because that's what TNA was known for was the six sides. So, um, just hiring, you know, all of Hogan's friends. I mean." I love the Nasty Boys, but I love the Nasty Boys back in 1991. You know what I mean? So, uh, and it was having them go over and like the Dudleys and stuff. And um, yeah, just complete mess. They really did destroy that company. Um, and it's such a shame. And I like Bischoff and I like Hogan, but they didn't belong in TNA. They uh, really, really destroyed that company. So, um, okay, we're back. Renee's Sorry, back. everyone. It must be a snowstorm outside. Uh, fixed stream. You know uh, will you ever understand how great Creed were? Oh, is that with arms wide open? Um, they've done a lot of songs with the WWE, if I remember right. Yeah, they did. That's when the music was really good. Um, what do you guys think about wrestlers that have uh, to have their own dressing room? I think it is ridiculous. Well, you're dealing with a lot of different people. Some people like to be alone. I remember towards my end there, I always try to find like a corner so I could dress by myself. Mm. You know, didn't Warrior have his own locker room? Uh, yeah, he did. And um, Brett wrote about it. He said, since he said it was always went to Warrior's head, but when he became when he became the top guy, it completely went to his head. He wouldn't sign autographs for anyone. And uh, yeah, yeah. Some people. There you are, handsome devil. Talk. We can't hear you. Jesus, Paul. Please get a new phone or laptop. We, or... Paul, next time, Paul, we need to come on like 20 minutes before. Yeah. And organize it. Can't hear you, bud. There's nothing. I apologize, everyone. You can see your handsome face. Nothing. Nothing. You can hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Yeah, no. Keep talking. Oh. Okay. Keep talking. Shoot. Must must be the headphones broke. Might be. Oh, you got his hood on. Shit's getting real now, boy. Cold ears. Oh. My apologies. Uh, the equipment that the CIA lends me sometimes is a little iffy. <laughs> we had loads of questions for you, Bob. Completely forgot. I think the one I remember was what was your reaction to the WrestleMania 20 main event when Benoit won the title? I mean, I thought it was great. That was uh, the the Bob Evans story I've told in the past where uh, I want to say, uh, yeah, I don't know. Either which way, um, I was extremely happy for him, you know. I mean, that was huge. I mean, was it Eddie on one side and uh, Chris on the other, right? Yeah, that was a pretty memorable moment when they both hugged and you know they had the titles and, and I mean, it just 
his wife really blasted the blasted the door down in terms of just you know it being all about mega heavyweights um yeah that was that was pretty awesome that was what new york city i think yeah must take madison square garden mm-hmm. dude you weren't on the card were you no i was hanging out backstage catering i mean you know the thing is uh did yeah, you see donald was- trump when he came in no uh, yeah. uh, i don't know um the donald was there but the thing is whenever there's a I'm I'm not interested, you know. Like all that, like you, you, all you, all you guys, all you other cruiserweights, you guys get it. I'll I'll get the next one. Oh, it's another open. Ah, you guys, you guys go ahead. I'll I'll wait. I'll get the next one. Um. So yeah, it was one of those opens. But I, I don't think Benoit was considered a cruiserweight because he was about two twenty. No, neither of them. At that point, <clears throat> neither yeah. of them, you know, Eddie was. Uh, Today, today's wrestlers are cruiserweights. Very much. They're lighter than that. Yeah, they're probably like featherweights. Like you take like uh, orange, Cassidy, weight. orange Cassidy, you might weigh what, a, a buck 40? I don't know. I don't care. Too cool to care, man. Cool lemon. I will be living in Tokyo for one year. Any advice? Wow. Wow. Um jeez. Stomper bar. I'm kidding. Um find a good uh Yekiniku place and uh befriend them. Always be polite. Try the hot coffee out of the vending machines. If you ever go to someone's house, always take off your shoes and properly put them to the side so it doesn't get in anybody's way. Always yeah. say please and thank you and learn in Japanese. Uh, sumimasen, that means excuse me. Arigato gozaimasu, means thank you. Uh, arigato, yeah. Dayodashimashita. Uh, uh, kudasai means please, or onagaishimasu means please. It's a polite way of saying please. Uh, okawari kudasai means refill, please. Onagaishimasu means you're hungry. Uh, onekai pai means you're full. Uh, you, you like, what was the longest you lived over there for? I mean, you lived over there for a while, didn't you? Three years. Three years at, at all at once without coming yeah. back? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you're you. I can tell your Japanese is. It's gotten well, pretty got, good. You're a Japanese wife too, so that helps. That helps too. Yeah, that that's. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Any Kai stories? Did you? Are you familiar with Kai Paul at all? No. Which Kai? Kai. He um, started with All Japan. He's a protege of the Great Muda. Uh, one of my best friends in the world. He no, I never met uh, He's now in the office in Dragon Gate. Um, Kai, I need a job. No, um, incredibly good worker. I brought him with me to Europe. Uh, we did a three-week tour of Europe. He was working with Pac mostly every night. You know Pac? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those guys tore it up. And... Uh, yeah, I, I knew he was going to be either a top guy or he's just like one of my best friends in the world. And he, now he's in the office, which he deserves because he's very, very professional and just a great dude. Is he young? I mean, is he still working? Oh, yeah. He, he works for Dragon Gate. I think he might still be their champion. I don't know. But oh. I know he's he's in the office there. He's the same age as me. He's 39. Yeah. yeah. Would you want to have an office job somewhere? Like, I mean, obviously, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, consistent pay, whatever. But is that something that you would ever be interested in doing, like an office? So I guess it depends on the position, right? Um, I'll definitely probably promote somewhere down the line again. I, you know, I ran close to 100 shows on my own, but I definitely like to start a dojo training center and possibly, like, I want to really build up this channel to where we get, like, Close to 100,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. 
And I'd like to Captain wrestling, man. stream live shows from this uh, from this channel. CPW. Oh, uh, Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling, The Resurrection. I kind of like Cafe Pro better, but it's your promotion, whatever, man. <laughs> Am I the booker then? I like uh, that. Yeah, no. I am on my wrestling knowledge. I can be a good writer. Uh, that's one thing we will not be having is writers. Uh, what? Yeah, but I'm a we'll good a writer. Booker. Okay. A booker. And in order well, I can be, be I can be Actually, booker. Paul London would make a great booker. Paul, you interested? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what kind of wrestling we're talking about. I love how I've helped build this channel. I get like no nothing from it. What? Excuse me. What'd I have built the channel. I get no uh, promotion from the uh, what do you call it? The new upstart wrestling promotion. I'm not even going to be the booker or anything. No, I you get no I t-shirts. Think you would be the James, I think you would be the booker. Be, in order to have a position in a wrestling promotion, you have to be a wrestler. You have to have not these days. <laughs> have you seen today's wrestling? <laughs> well, not exactly. That's why it's the shits. In my one of the reasons why it's the shits. Hey Paul, I know you travel with Ben, but what do you remember about working out with him? I heard he liked squats and dead hangs. Um, yeah, that was pretty awesome. You worked out with Chris a few times, didn't you, Renee? Had you ever worked out with him? I did not. Oh man, yeah, super intense. Uh, I remember he would start off like we'd always start off with at least like a half hour of cardio, at least a half hour to an hour of cardio, and then he would, he would start always his do. Workouts? He would start his workouts with cardio. Yeah, I mean it would depend. Like sometimes we'd start with that because he would like I just want to get out of the way, um, and so he would start with that. Uh, but he would always do like. Um, neck lifts before he did anything like he would lay on a bench and do like head lift side yep. other side like back i mean he would like every time um, Japanese dojo training is what he was doing yeah but also i think guys that have like neck injuries too it's just like continual neck strengthening you know it's like something that yeah doesn't get a lot of emphasis today which you know it seems like there's more head dropping uh type stuff today than there ever has been um some kid in some suburb is inventing some sort of ridiculous head dropping move as i say this so strengthening the neck is of the utmost importance um but yeah he would always do that uh and then um lifting yeah like he would you know it's pretty intense it wasn't like I'm trying to remember. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. There is a workout that I do, like a certain exercise that I do um, with the overhang, the overhead, like kind of like with the lat pull machine, but what you do more of a closer in grip and go to your forehead. Um, I call those the Benoit's because he taught me those. And it strengthens kind of the inside of your, uh, like trapezius. inner back. Yeah, trapezius for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I would usually finish off with those whenever we're doing back or shoulders or something uh but he would all yeah i remember he would he'd um you know he's like so committed to everything that he did but like even the workouts like if you give your all and you were just exhausted after like he would hope that you would be he'd like you know like give you a big like manly hug and be like thank you thank you for the workout you know i'd be like yeah all right like, it's kind of like a ritual like I worked um, out with Bob one time, and I guess he thought that I wouldn't be able to keep up. But we were doing like leg presses and squats, and it's like, what was it at five in the morning? No, it was probably in the morning, but I was used to it. It's like I don't think he realized, like, hey, I've been lifting weights since I was eleven, and I competed, and you know what I mean. So like, he would put like eight or nine plates on the leg press, and then squat with like two plates aside, and I was superset, and I was like, okay, can we add another plate? So I think that impressed him. But I didn't really didn't give a fuck if I impressed him or not. Like, <laughs> I don't need to impress you. <laughs> yeah. James, you doing okay, always... man? You look depressed over there, Bell. Tired. Uh, ben Bash. Hey, guys. Question for you both. Uh, Paul and Renee. 
got any stories about Funaki and why do you think he was kept around in WWE for such a long time? What a prick. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> Probably the nicest guy in the locker room is Funaki. Yeah, Funaki's awesome. No, because he's a great guy. Everybody loves him, and they, they can use him for all sorts of things. He could be a trainer. He could be an announcer. He could be a referee. He could be a wrestler. He could be uh, uh, a color commentator, which I think that's what he does now. Am I, am I correct? Well, he also he, he's a coner of that school in San Antonio. Um, right. Yeah, he runs a school in San Antonio with hybrid, hybrid pro wrestling, uh, him and Chris Marvel. So that's a, if you're in Texas, I mean, that's like basically that would be the school to go to to learn. They have like four rings. I mean, it's a great facility. Um, and, well, uh, don't forget about Rodney Mack and Jazz. They're in San Antonio too, and they're a great. Trainer. Are they really? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I would hope at this point most most of the solid workers have you know that kind of at least that common respect. They're like, I don't know. But I get it, you know, like a lot of schools are just kind of hoping that the students just keep paying the dues and they teach them a little, but not enough to like really maybe advance sometimes. It's 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 difficult to run a school, I think, um, for sure. I mean, that would be something you'd be really good at, too, Renee. Um, the I don't cafe think I have the patience. I mean, I would own one, but I, I have something in mind. Yeah. Like, Thing is brewing in my brain, bro. Yeah. Brewing. This is the cafe. Yes, that's it. James, man, you got to wake up, pal. He needs he needs wine, I think. You need some booze, um, buddy. Where I live. Um, Rimham, Paul, what are your thoughts on Johnny Curtis, aka Fandango? He was on the podcast recently, and he's on the Indies now after 15 years in WWE. I would love to see you guys work together, versus or as a team. I mean, I, I I don't think I've ever met him, but by all accounts, he seems like a good dude, solid worker yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, the one here, he was great. Yeah, seems like he a really. Was, cool, I mean, he was in Maine. Never, He's never heard anything Maine. bad. Yeah, Maine. I'd like to ask him about lobster ice cream. Oh. He's ever had it. Um, mm. but mm. yeah, it'd be fun. Have you ever had fun. seafood grass roll, Paul? Seafood casserole? Yeah. I mean, I've had stuff that was called seafood casserole. I don't know, but like, uh, I mean, it gotta, probably wasn't going to be yeah, as fresh as you get. You got to come up here. You got to come take a vacation in the Maritime. I'll try to get you booked. Oh, that'd be sweet, man. Yeah. We could go looking for creatures in the woods. No, man, we'll go hang out. At the, if it's the summertime, we'll go hang out at the beach, try to get on one of my buddy's boats. I don't own a boat. I don't know how to drive one, and I don't care to learn. Yeah, but there's like some forests and stuff around you, right? There's everything, dude. We got wilderness. We got to, ocean. We got beaches. Forest, man. You don't know what kind of creatures and critters could be out there. It's the fucking maritime. Yeah. Sex, drugs, and lobster rolls, my friend. Not in the forest, when, man. Wendy goes in the forest. Yeah, honestly, it'd be cool to explore the maritime's forests. Oh, yeah. There was deer in my parents' yard this past spring. Ah, well, I mean, I like deer, but I grew up with them everywhere, so that's not as impressive. I know we could find some sort of the Maritimes maniac or some sort of something's out in that well, forest, man. Thing, you took me out in Austin. I, I got to return the favor and take you out in the Maritimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's some good times. All right, let's see. What's your best great Kali story? Thank you, Super Nick. Um, do you have any good Kali stories, Renee? Just going for a blood test with me, him, and Test in New York, and they're just the people staring at him. Yeah, spring, yeah. definitely draws attention. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think I ever really interacted with him much. I, it was we did a spot where I like hit him with the, a chair on the back or something, and he unfazed just like chops me. Pretty painful chop, actually. But I remember there was talk that when he was in Deep South, he would keep his apartment at like 120 degrees or something. I heard that. The heat on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his wife was like four foot 11, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> it's too bad because you ever see him in New Japan, clips of him in New Japan, how agile he was? He could jump over the top rope and. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
What? When was this? Two thousand. What? Yeah. You should. Uh, you can go on YouTube and just break Kali in New Japan, and we can see like matches. And I'll stuff. take your word for it. Just take my word for it. <laughs> Thoughts on the K1 White gimmick? Horrible. Absolutely terrible. Stupid gimmick. I like the real Kerwin, who they modeled that after. He was always really nice. Is that the guy, the short guy with the beard? Green yeah, he was nice. Yeah, guy. he was cool. Very cool. Um, that's actually Dolph Ziggler's second gimmick after the Spear Squad. He was the golf caddy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Coach Reg Dunlop, uh, Renee, ever seen a sleep paralysis yes. demon? Yes, I have. That's scary. Remember, I told you I suffer from sleep paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, but like, literally, I. So this is so fucked up, dude. Like. I could You're in a safe place here. You Sometimes I hear whispering in my ear. Sometimes I'm seeing people walk around. I thought it was my wife, and I open my mouth, and she's lying next to me. And then literally, I feel people pushing on my shoulder. It's fucked, dude. It's really fucked up. Sleep paralysis. Does it happen when you're like I'm trying? To... Okay. Yeah. When it, like it happens to me. As I'm getting older, maybe they hit all the concussions from the past, or like explain the sleep, explain the sleep paralysis part again. Like, okay, so how does that just about, when you're, just about when you're ready, like to shut your eyes and go to sleep, right? Right before, before you're like passed out, your whole body will tense up and freeze, and you can't move. Okay, and then uh, like th this happens a lot. He talks about demons, like you start seeing shit, and like. So you're like you're asleep, but you're still conscious. And I felt people pushing on my shoulder, people whispering in my ear. It's fucked, dude. Yeah, it's really crazy. And it happens a lot, like especially when I'm coming home from say Japan or overseas and I'm jet lagged. Yeah. Screwed up. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. But it's been happening to me a lot recently. And I hate Does it, it wake up like if you're like you gotta force yourself, really force yourself to, to get up. But when you're in the paralysis, you can't move. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, does it wake up? Like, if your wife's next to you, does it wake her up or something? No. Like, no, no, because you, oh, really? you can't talk, you can't do shit. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure if like you're tensing up. <laughs> oh, like, not, no, no, when like, she's asleep, when she's asleep, nothing, I'm, nothing can wake her up. It would be interesting to record yourself. Um, and you can run your own trial run, your own trials, and study yourself. You know, yeah. They say it's not. I googled it. They said it's not dangerous, but I hate it. I hate it when it happens, dude. It sounds like it could be, though. You'd think, but I've been having that since uh, since I was a teenager. What, do you struggle with sleep issues, James? I know you don't get enough sleep, but no. Once I go to bed, I'm out like a light. Yeah, I mean that's part of it. Just sleep on your so like really make sure that you're tired. I don't know where Renee went. <laughs> My average hours sleep I get uh, five probably. Five hours. Yeah, All the time I, I finish it. podcasts, editing, get up, school runs, work. Yeah, about five hours on average. So I probably get about thirty hours a week sleep. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. We commend you. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Uh, how was uh, I'm guessing she means Melina. How was Melina like in WWE? Oh, I thought she was talking about uh, is it Alfred oh, Melina? Yeah, I was oh, yeah. I, I, you know, Doc Ock, brilliant, brilliant professor. I don't know. He, Do you know what film in, he was in? For, and I didn't realize for years, Indiana Jones. The the, well, that, but he plays like the Mexican in or the Spaniard in uh, Maverick. I don't remember Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. And... I love that yeah. film. I don't think well, I ever he plays saw the him. bad guy. He's the bad guy in it. It's a great film. Renee, do you have any memories of Molina? <laughs> Melina, I'm assuming. Or Alfred oh, Molina. Rosa Mendez. Her name was Melina, too, right? For a shoot. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I always thought she was cool. I never had an issue with her. Yeah, never had any issues with her either, you know. Um, Last time I seen her, we were in Germany, and she's still a sweetheart to me. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
Mm. Nice girl. Yeah, she was always mm. very, very polite. Uh, Dale, I'm a huge fan of your insight and content. Thank you, Paul. Can you imitate Horseshoe reciting lines from a few good meningitis? Love from New York. I don't have my sunglasses. I don't need no goddamn sunglasses. The truth is, I got meningitis. And the thing is, you can't have... You can't handle the meningitis. You can't handle it. Fucking bullshit. All of the fucking meningitis. You can't handle it. Dude, I'm surprised you never see him on like auditions and stuff in California. I don't think he will. Wherever you're living. I mean, we're not exactly in the same category. Right. So. He'd probably be reading for different lines. Yeah. Does he still, does it, do you hear any him in movies or nothing? No. Just uh, out there somewhere in the universe, right? Where the horseshoes roam. How do they get the name horseshoe? I always thought it was because it was the shape of his haircut. That's I think I that was part of it. Yeah, right, yeah. It was shoe time, and he's you know the whole effing shoe, and all these different shoe phrases. You know. Good guy. I really like him. He's funny. Mr. Crow, good. What's up, guys? Hey, Paul. Any Orlando Jordan stories? Gosh. We, what are you I trying to do? That's a pretty good donation. Should we give him the mesh shirt story? We haven't said that. I don't know. That's... Man. <laughs> so you, guys, you guys were rooming together, right? You guys shared a room. Yeah. I think I'm going to shift gears, though, and <laughs> tell a different story. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, but we weren't... <laughs> it was... Yeah. There was a time when we were in... It might have been Madison Square Garden, actually. You know, the locker rooms where everyone's, like, right on top of each other. Yeah, super small. Yeah, and I remember... Uh, may he rest in peace, our, our brother Ryan Sakota. He was great dude, very good, good, awesome guy, uh, and a good buddy of ours. So we were, you know, you're tiptoeing around luggage and trying to go here and there. And I just remember uh, I was packing up my bags, and he comes out of the shower, and he just he has this towel wrapped around him. He's, like, terrified. I'm like, what the fuck, man? You all right? He goes, yeah. <laughs> You're never gonna, you're never gonna believe what, what Renee, where, what, <laughs> what Renee. <laughs> it definitely, it wasn't Renee. I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes out of the shower just terrified and wide-eyed. He's like, you never, you never gonna believe what Orlando just said to me. I was like, what? He was, yeah. We're in the shower. Or I'm in the shower. It's showering. You know, like you can kind of tell somebody's like staring at you. So I, I don't know why, but I just turn it to look, and he's just staring at me, staring at me, like right at my dick. And I'm like, what the hell? And he just looked at me and he goes, I want to trim that up, man. Shape it up, make it presentable. <laughs> yeah, I go what? And uh. Yeah, and I was like, "Why, why, in the shower?" He's like, yeah, like nothing, man. Small talk. I don't know. And he just he kind of walked out, and I go, "Well, you don't want to turn around, then. Just keep going that way." And he goes, oh. "Of course." He turns around, and he's just like squatted down there, like playing pinata or something. I don't know what was going on, but it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. Ryan was, I mean, he was like as white as his towel. Oh. oh, one time I was walking in the locker room and like, I, God knows where we were, but it was like an open, like walk into the locker room and there's like an open concept with the showers right there. And then Orlando was in there like scrub a dub and, and I, you know, you just peek over and he's like, hey! 
Yeah. Happy to... I mean, some people get excited to shower, man. I get it. Yeah. I mean, if anything, I was like, you should have thanked him. I mean, grooming tips, you know? Manscapes. We need to get back yeah. into Manscapes. Did he, offer any, like, did, he have, did he offer any, like, suggestions? You know, like, maybe go with, like, the Mickey or, you know, the lightning bolt, you know, something, tornado. I don't know. Right. Fee, Chan, and Billy, can I ask you guys a stupid question? No. Yeah? No, next question. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> charming, Bill. Oh, that was charming. James, did we get the Squidward tentacles, testicles yet? Uh, not yet, but I know he's uh, sent in a couple of questions, so we'll get yeah. to him soon. Uh, <clears throat> uh, too many sloppy strikes these days, in his opinion. Wrestling. I mean, if you, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Stuff. What do you think we thought he meant? <laughs> Sloppy strikes. <laughs> oh, well, after that uh, Orlando Jordan story, maybe you thought. Well, that's that. another thing is um, I think strikes, um, you're right. They do look very sloppy. I, I don't think um, from the from the wrestlers that I know take an extracurricular sport training martial art whatever it's usually like brazilian jiu-jitsu which doesn't have striking really in it uh i mean am i wrong like there's no Not so really. um there's not the really any striking the, Jap- the reason the japanese promotions throw it because the punch is supposed to be illegal it's always supposed to be illegal but we've gone away from that one one of my pet peeves are like japan now is that like, there's supposed to be a 20 count on the floor. Now, if you watch that uh, um, Osprey and Omega match, at one point in time, they were up on the outside for, like, three minutes. So, the uh, enemy, yeah, so, like, they're just throwing the rules out the window. And I've noticed that a lot. So, like, now there's no more rules, and it's just, it's just a, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, car crash matches, we used to call them, right? It's just a car crash. Yeah. Where it's action, 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 and the, the rules go out the window. You know. Yeah, I mean, I would think if you're wanting to be convincing with your strikes and you're looking to do a lot of kicks and things like that, then training in taekwondo or even muay thai would probably definitely benefit you because uh, you'll at least be learning and training with flexibility and very high kind of dramatic kicks. Um, and you'll have control over them, you know. I'm sure you've been in the ring several times with people that you felt, you know, each hit they gave you was of a different kind of impact because they couldn't really control it. Yeah, um, I got. I was working in Maine one time with this guy, and he cut me off like a, you know, we call it a Pearl Harbor job, and the guy cuts you out yeah. before getting in, and he struck right. me with the knee because he saw it on whatever – Japanese promotion he was watching. Clark, there goes my nose. Yeah. Uh, James, uh, Fixstream is asking for the email to send that. Um, is it Cafe de Rene Gmail? Is that it? Uh, no, Cafe de Rene at yahoo.com. Yeah, so Fixstream, send over that voice thing and then we'll try to air it live so we can uh, react to it. How's about that? It's supposed to be Vince doing something. Uh, the champ, thank you for the donation. Uh, why the Mexicals debuted against uh, um, who knows? I mean, just random fodder. Um, it would have made more sense if uh, Chavo and I started a program in that sense, but um, no, I think I remember that being in uh, I want to say Tucson, Arizona, maybe. And similar, it was that was one of those things where you you're told you're going to be a part of this, but that's it. Like you're, it's not going anywhere. It's not starting any kind of program or anything. And um, you know, it's at that moment that you realize where you stand in the company. (laughs) Yeah, 
you know. Um, Richard, how about Lou Fisto as another female co-host? How'd you pronounce it, James? Lou Fisto. Lou Fisto. Uh, you met Lefisto, right, Paul? You must have. Yeah, she's solid. She's great. She the last last show. She's I Canadian did, too, isn't she? She's from Montreal. Yeah, she got a lot yeah. of experience. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Actually, if um, we're gonna hold off on the female co-host because the numbers aren't where I want them to be yet. So, yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Shit, man, this storm is hitting hard, dude. If I cut oh, off, man. Do you have a shelter or a basement? I do. Do you really a basement? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't got. You guys don't have that in Texas, do you? No. Basements. Sometimes. Yeah. England doesn't have basements either, does it, uh, James? A uh, couple, but not. That's not common. More it's not common, right? No. Like a detached yeah. garage. Pull... No, no, super like crazy nice messing. Pool. What? Sip, sip crazy messing with your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I was like, I can't. <laughs> why is this not working? Stealing your Wi-Fi you sure, too. Are you sure you didn't mess with my Wi-Fi? Okay. <laughs> Did I use the password? I I gave the password to Hacksaw too. <laughs> Inside guys. Yeah, psychosis too. I give the password to everybody. It's like Netflix. I give out my password. James is frozen, everyone. Nah, I just got the um, can you hear me? I just got the uh, link from Fixstream. I'll uh, send it over to you in a minute. Uh, let me just get okay. this question up. Um, John, thank you, John. Hi, Renee and Paul. What was uh, Shannon Moore fun to work with? Yes, yeah, very, very, very talented guy. I always enjoyed because he was a smaller guy. Uh, I I always liked wrestling with smaller guys just because I could highlight them yeah. easier with their stuff and uh, yeah they could bump around. For and he me. always had like a good physique on him, you know. He's like a like a thick smaller guy, but he always had he always looked great. I always thought he had like some of the best gear. Um, and well, he was dating the seamstress, right, Julie? For I don't think they're together anymore, <laughs> but yeah. Uh. But was she making all that stuff? I guess she was, huh? Why well, I imagine. I don't know. Yeah, but Shannon was a great guy. I like to have him on here. Yeah, Shannon would be awesome. Do you have his contact, James? Is James frozen again? He's again, or he's fall asleep with his eyes open? <laughs> he might have. He might have. He might be asleep with his eyes open. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell. That, freezes, that froze the questions too, huh? <laughs> froze the questions. I got to start being the moderator for this if this is going to continue happening. Yeah. Yeah. Think about live chats. Oh, and he's gone. He's oh, maybe he's trying to bring up that. Um, the email. Oh, the boy, yeah. What was, yeah, what was that? Who was that? They caught um, on. So apparently there is a uh, WhatsApp voicemail message that's leaking with Vince McMahon. So I don't know if it's legit or if it's just one of those fake accounts. Because there's apparently there's a fake you website that takes people's voices and they can redo it. Okay. I guess mine is out there, apparently. So Why are people using your voice? Exactly. I don't know why. And is James returning? I'm all... Drum roll. Drum roll. There he and is. And he's back. Yay. All right, I've sent you that um, link to that video. It's on uh, where, YouTube. Where? Oh, is it on the Facebook Facebook thing? chat, yeah. Okay. Okay, hold on. Can you guys hear? Well, I 
Okay. Did you guys hear that? I mean, I heard something that sounded like a hotline, but <laughs> he's been booted off. <laughs> and I can't bring up the old, old super chats as well, so I need Renee to come back on. So, oh my goodness. See, I'm not the only one with technical difficulties. No, I'm all, I'm all right, but they told me to leave, <laughs> so I had to leave, and now I've lost where we was now, and um, yeah, um, shoot, shit, because I know we had some big donations as well. Um, I'm gonna have to yeah, try and get Re Renee to uh, look on my account, get the comments back up. Yeah, but uh, uh, um, let's see. <laughs> It's like the recording just took them out. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. This storm is fucked. I need yeah. you to go through the chats because I can't access the earlier chats. Well, am I able to pull them up? Uh, fingers crossed because we had some big donations. Yeah, I know. I don't think I can, bud. I think because oh, you started the stream... What happened? Did Fixstream give you a bug? No, it's when I leave when I leave this, then uh, what do you call it? It can sometimes take me out. Okay, so. well, going forward, we're not going to do any more send us stuff and play it live on air. How about that? Because it screws yeah. everything up. So if you want to send stuff for us to play, make sure you send it beforehand. So what was the last question, dude? Uh, you, you were talking about Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore. Okay. Holy Christ. We got a lot of super chats tonight, guys. Yeah, no. That's why <sighs> hopefully you can get to them. I can't. Seriously? It, it stopped at Shannon Moore. Didn't he work with Matt Hardy for a long time? Yeah. All so. right. Going forward, we're not doing that anymore because it screws everything up. And I can't bring up I can't bring up the questions. Fixed Here's a question fault. from Alex Costantino. Paul, when you oversold Snixky's clothesline in the Rumble, badass sell, yes it was. How did the stretcher and EMTs come into play if you weren't supposed to get attention on you? That's a good question. That's a great question because you know I certainly had no say in that. So that was all a call from, I guess, from the back from Gorilla. Oh, so you didn't and know they were going to come out? No, they. I, I think they. They. I just told them what the bump was going to be, um, and they didn't seem impressed by that. I don't think they could understand what it was. I think they probably just thought I was going to get clothesline and fall to the ground. You know, so that was all their call to see that. And then audibly send a stretcher and EMTs and all that nonsense. Um, and then do the replays over and over. Or so, uh, and then show it every year come rumble time and highlight it. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's all on them, man. So, so that was a call on the fly for the stretcher job and nothing came afterwards, right? No angle, nothing. No, that would mean they're invested in it. Wow. Uh, I know where I'm at on the super chats. So I've got a couple more above you, Renee. You can't go further up now. I can't go further up. Right. Uh, Squidward, you sent two super chats. So if you just don't pay for them, just throw your what your questions were down. I'll keep an eye out for them. And because the next question is this one, Serta Kane. So if anyone, if you've sent a super chat in, if it's a buff set of cane, just send them back to the bottom and I'll make sure I read them. So just uh, do that and I'll, you know, so you got your money's worth. Uh, so sorry, everyone. It's my bad. I blame Fixstream. You made me log off. Um, set of cane, good evening, gentlemen. Paul um, Paul would be featured on Cinemax one day. Yours warmly, set of cane. What does that mean? I'm guessing he might want us to talk about In the Mouth of Badness. Which is a, right. a underrated John Carpenter movie. Sam Neill. It's a great film, but Sutter Kane is 
the character in that in that movie. Ah, oh, right. Right. We'll uh, Mr. Crow, good. Hey, Paul, when did you realize you could do flips? Did you train gymnastics before your entrance uh, with the awesome flip into the handshake was the best? Oh, thank you. Um, I flip right out of the womb, dog. Uh, yeah, I I basically grew up on a trampoline. Um, I didn't. I I tried to take gymnastics, but I couldn't get anyone to accept me into like their gymnastics school because they all thought I was too big or too old. This is just like a couple weeks ago, and um, no, I yeah just lived on a trampoline basically my whole youth that's why i don't have any friends right now so well, that's the thing i think tupo scorpio did an interview one time and he was absolutely right he says you know you busted all this cool innovative shit and then little kids watching will copy it and then the big promoter will hire them for less money and they just do all your stuff yeah i mean right. that's definitely a possibility that's why I think um, getting it, getting over with your character or your personality and be able to be a good talk is more important than ever. Yeah. Because, yeah. If you're known for all your cool flips and dives and all that other shit, people can copy that. And then you just become all the same old shit. You understand? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> right now, I just, when I jump on the trampoline, I just get into my speedo and my my weights and do the dentist stamp right are you up to the, are you up to the 20 pound dumbbells or are you still at 15 yeah no just the 12s 12s right yeah, yeah. the yeah with the font with the with the coating the plastic coating over them and they're like a baby blue right right yeah just trying to find next super chat so i'm just trying to go through these questions careful so like i said everyone if well, i was very young you, please put it back yeah. Yeah. Skidward uh, testicles actually uh I think he sent another donation with the same question. Right. I know he sent two. Just trying to uh, cool. catch back up here. Um if not, I'll just have to screenshot them as I go through them later and answer them on the next one. Uh oh fuck's sake. James number one fangirl. <laughs> Fuck. Paul, did you see my admirer? Oh, she's, yeah, smoking. <laughs> she's smoking for. Yeah. Well, it's your call, James. Should we bring her on as the co host? She'll do it for free. I bet she would. <laughs> um, let's see. I was trying to find it here now. Um, anyway, here we go. Um, any idea why Don Callis uh, Jackal had a lot of heat? James, you know all the backstage gossip. Why does he have a lot of heat? Uh, so, from what I heard, it's just that they, everyone in the office uh, felt like he was too busy trying to get himself over instead of the uh, talent he was managing. What about the uh, sexual harassment allegations? Well, that's an impact wrestling, but weren't you there during that time, Paul? Paul, no. you worked there? Um, not not really. I did a couple spots for them, but there was no uh, no employment or anything. It was more of like a I don't know what it was. <laughs> it was interesting, but very disorganized uh, backstage. And I think I just I just saw a mark for himself. You know, somebody that's just a big mark for themselves. Uh, and um, might have thought that he could live the rock and roll lifestyle by getting into some sort of propositioning. I don't know. I don't. I only know as much as everybody else, I guess. But I ran into him at a <clears throat> at the airport lounge, Maple Leaf Lounge in Toronto. I said, I didn't even say hi to him. We made eye contact. I didn't bother saying hi to the prick. Yeah, I mean, what I don't, what do I give a shit? Yeah, <laughs> Sam Donnelly, how much for that OJ mess shirt story? Worth it, just ask twice. <laughs> <laughs> Name your price, Paul. 
I don't know if I have any. I don't. I don't know if I have enough battery power left on this. <laughs> it's. It, it is. It is an awesome question, though. It is an awesome story. Like when you told me that, dude. I. I laughed. I still laugh to this day. I can never go to fishing anymore. It's not the same. Will, will we get a lawsuit if you told it? <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know what. If it's just like. Just. I don't think so. It's just such like a situ like situational awareness, just like observational comedy. Why is that, is that the that? last time y'all room together? <laughs> well, except for the the couple time, like, except for like the Dwayne time when he kind of like somehow managed to get a key to the room and was just all like part of the group all of a sudden. Just invite himself in. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hearing that Raw has pyro. Oh, sweet. Because they quit doing pyro, right, to save money or whatever. Squidward testicles. Thank you, uh, Squidward. Um, hopefully, this was the one you sent earlier. Fingers crossed. Uh, with all the travel and locations you guys have visited while with the WWE. Any spooky encounters you guys can share, i.e. haunted hotels. Oh, okay. That Orlando Jordan... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that would be the scariest that of them all. The yeah. um, I remember me, Mark Henry, and Sly were traveling. On, did you ever see, like, we saw, like, um, uh, uh, a car on the side of the highway that was on fire and, like, a body hanging out, like... Uh, with his head cut off. It's Kane. It's yeah, Kane. I mean, yeah, yeah, that was pretty fucking scary. Yeah. Gee. Uh, Did the head was cut off or just hanging there? No. Yeah, yeah, that was creepy as fuck, dude. That was... Oof. What was it hanging on by? Like tendrils or something? Like, it, the car was on fire and this guy was like, I guess dead. You know, he had no head. And he was like hanging out the side of the driver's best. Yeah. What if his eyes just like... Well, I know, because we were, like, it was a four-lane highway when we were on the other side, but we saw the flames, and then we saw, like, the headless corpse. It was fucked. That's never uh, fun. Shit like that gives you PTSD, man. Oh. Mesh shirts can give you PTSD also. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Royal Rumble, uh, Bushwhacker Luke. I'll be right back. Royal uh, Rumble Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's Chris Masters. Let's, let's, I hope he's in it. I hope he wins. Well, I know he would. Yeah, I hope he's in it though. I think Cody's gonna win it. Bushwhacker Luke. Bushwhacker Luke will never win. Did he just go outside in the storm? I'm just trying to read through these. Um, Questions, um, making sure. Uh, okay, John, uh, I'm gonna take your word for it. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit of trust. Uh, I sent a five dollar super chat, Renee. Do the title belts mean anything to you at this point in your career? Like being the youngest tag team champion, did the US title snub bother you? Where is he? Whoa, <laughs> I can't do it. What were you, Paul? Do um... the title belts mean anything to you? At first, at first it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it was it's neat to be trusted with that position. Um, yeah, it was always a neat thing, I think, for sure. Mm. It was the kind of thing where I would like take pictures on my free time and make videos with them and do things to them. Like, no. Um, usually it would just stay in my luggage in the closet. Mm until it was time to pack up again and go. So, um, <clears throat> never used it to get out of a ticket or to get, you know, cut in line or any stupid shit like that. I never carried it into a steakhouse and lost it. Um, never did any of that crap. You know, I'm not a mark for hardware. Titles <laughs> yeah. mean anything to you, Renee? Um, if the paydays are better, yeah, sure. 
usually when you have a title, that means you're going to be on pay-per-view and usually make more money, right? You would think. You would think. Listen, when you take bumps and you damage your body, you want to make money for it, all right? Yeah. Yep. I don't understand why fans can't understand that. Bruce Wayne, uh, Michael Keaton. That's a good one. What do you think, James? Oh, it's hard to disagree. I do love Keaton, and I've said to you many times, Batman Returns is very, very underrated. Um, Christian Bale's a good Batman, though. He's great, but, yeah. So is Clooney. I know you like Clooney as Batman, as Bruce. <laughs> Clooney was good he's, as Bruce Wayne, but not as Batman. Batman. <laughs> right, right. I still haven't seen a new one yet, though, with Robert Patterson, but I've heard it's really good. Yeah. Ben Affleck yeah, is actually think... okay as well. Am I alone? In... No, when Michael say... Keaton would be my pick, too. You know, when I say that I like the heels better in the Batman movies than actually Batman. Oh, no, that's quite popular to do. So, like, growing up, where the first, well, the 1989 one with Keaton and uh, Jack Nicholson as Joker, I was cheering on Joker as a kid. Well, that's the thing. It's like wrestling. The heels, The heels draw the money. It's a heels mm. business, just like in the Batman or any franchise. It's always the heels, man. Well, he was paid a crazy amount for that film as well. That's why was, well, we'll have to do Batman and Batman Returns. But yeah, Jack absolutely. Nicholson, like, he got paid like a stupid amount. Like, I forgot what it was, but it was a stupid amount he got paid for it. Because yeah. there's a fun story with that. So Tim Burton, <laughs> who directed it, always wanted Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was always 50-50. So they offered the role to Robin Williams with no intention of giving it to Robin Williams, but it was to try and tempt Jack Nicholson to say, oh, we're going to give it to Robin Williams. So Jack Nicholson got on the phone, got the contract sorted out, and that's how he ended up being the Joker. Wow. Can you see Robin Williams being the Joker? I mean, it seems like he'd be more of a Riddler type, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just can't see him as a heel. And what, right. in whatever movie did he play? That was he a, the bad guy? One hour oh, photo. Uh, yeah. One hour photo. Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. One hour. He's like yeah. a crazy, like kind of stalker, psychotic. Remember okay. back in the day when you used to get your photos developed? Right. Yeah. So he was a photo developer, and he just don't know what it was. He just took a thing to his family pictures, and he just started I'm stalking obsessive. them and stuff. Yeah. I got, I'll, I'll try to look for that one. Yeah, check it out. One hour photo. Okay. Some parts of yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire, too. Terrifying. That would never get made today. <laughs> I, and, and I love uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. That would never get made today in today's climate. Um, Squidward, thank you so much. Um, ever Jesus. had to use the bathroom during a match or know of anyone who did? Thanks. That's a good question. <laughs> Um, you always have to use the bathroom right before you go out. Funny yeah, enough, hundred like percent, always, yeah. always. Um, and some people, it was always the the worst case scenario of having to use the bathroom before you go out, and then next thing you know, you're like picking them up, slamming them, and their asses near your face, and yeah, I can. That can, that's one. That's another reason not to wear all white. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I never had. I don't, I don't think I ever pissed or shot myself very close one time. Working, I've, I've working the juice. Farted. Actually, I farted in the ring before. That happens quite a bit. See, I sharted. I did like shard. I sharted. Working the really? movie. Actually, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it was taste, like off of the like taste. A, <laughs> what? The taste, the texture. <laughs> I, you, you call the cross body roll through, and fucking, I got you, baby, but like you roll through, I didn't mean to be heavy, but you go to pick me up. <laughs> he was like a sack of Mexican potatoes, man. 
um, papas. Uh, papas. And uh, yeah, just you know, it's more of like a like a shit vapor. <laughs> I can honestly say I never sharded, but I did. Uh, well, maybe I did. Maybe I did I'm sure you did with your white panties. Come on. Dude, you know, I've been, fuck, I started wrestling at 14, dude. It's been 25 years. Didn't you, like... Squidward testicles. Didn't your Squidward testicles come out? Yes, they did. Twice. Happened in Germany, too. I took a... I was sitting on the... I was sitting on the top rope. The guy dropped me, and I went down, and tights got hooked into the top and then they pulled out and my cock and balls were exposed. It happens. It happens. Right. Uh, animal Instinct. I sent a five pound super chat, a two dollar super chat. What day is Rob Conway going to be on? That's not Conway. Uh, we're looking for April because April was the debut of La Resistance so we're hoping we can have a 20 year anniversary. Nice. Real nice. Um, like I said, everyone, if you sent a super chat, what I haven't read out, uh, just say if you have and I'll uh, read it out. Oh, don't do that, James, because then there are a bunch of people who haven't will. Yeah, well, we got good fans, so, you know, I think they'll be honest with us. Don't right. trust anybody. That's right. Um, Sam Donnelly, thank you for the twenty dollar donation. Uh, you're dancing around the issue, Paul. I want that damn story. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you kidding? Jesus! I thought I've told this story before, haven't I? Not on here. Not on here. Pretty sure. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. When you guys interviewed me, I was talking about wrapping yourself in like a burrito. No, you didn't go all the way through. You didn't go all the way through with it, dude. God. Why people treat me treat me like a whore, man? Shut your mouth! I bet you felt like one after that night. <laughs> he did. Where'd he go? He's oh, gone. did you leave us? Hey, um, jobber. Okay, heads up. Sent two missing super chats on Twitter. Oh, can you go to the twatter? It'll knock me out of here. What I'll do, Cherry Pepsi Man, I'll screenshot them and I'll read them out on the uh, next live stream. So I promise. How about we do that? The people that sent can go on Twitter, maybe. Yeah. Everyone's saying I'm really quiet tonight. It's half past one, guys. I am pretty tired, okay? Um, let's see. Let's find some here. Uh... We caught up. I don't know how many we missed, so I'm sorry, everyone. If you just send a screenshot, we'll answer them on the next one. Uh, DF12, thoughts on Shelton Benjamin and Dolph Ziggler? Uh, two amazing wrestlers. Uh, good guys, too. I uh, never got a chance to wrestle with Nicky Nemeth. That's Ziggler. I wrestled Shelton in Europe. Uh, incredible athletes. But how are they being used now on the show? Uh, they're on about putting together the um, the hair business back together. The oh, group Shelton that... was in with Lashley in that. Lashley, MVP. Okay. Why yeah, they, 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 why'd they quit doing it? They just run its course? No, because people still loved it. Or well, they just... I don't know if they just ended it for some reason. And did they wasn't bring even... that out when the Black Lives Matter was really at its peak? Is that when I don't think, so. I don't I think, think so. so. I think so. Well, um, it'd be interesting to see if they bring it back, but that's the rumor. And Sigler, he's always on the card, but he's getting no big push in the middle, unless. He wins this. I think they're having a. Uh, I think it's tonight, or it might have been last week. I might have missed it. It's like a six-man match to see the number one contenderous for the U.S. title. 
Um, but he's, been, he's been steadily on TV for the last 16 years, right? Oh, yeah, he's been paid well. And apparently he's got a really good contract. He can do his um, stand-up shows and whatever he wants. Yeah, well, that's the so, thing. No matter how talented you are and stuff, eventually people just get sick of seeing you. Yeah. You know? Uh, after the incidents with Super Crazy and Duggan, has Paul learned to stop leaving his weed laying ar- uh, lying around freely? I'm sure. I, I think he uh, he actually mentioned that after that he didn't ride with anybody. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't even know if Paul even smokes weed anymore. I don't think he does. I never have. Uh, I used to, but not anymore. Uh, Sammy Bolson, thank you. Uh, thoughts on the actor Vincent Gallo? Never heard of him. Sure, Paul I'm has. Sure, I'm sure Paul has. I'll try to get back to him. Paul's battery died. So sorry again for crashing the stream. It's okay. <laughs> Never again. No. No, it's cool. We learn a valuable lesson. If you do that, it's going to mess everything up. So no worries. The photo guy from One Hour Photo did nothing wrong. Uh, I've, I've never watched it all the way through, but I, from what I gather, oh, well, Paul's back. Um, he's back. Um, I thought he like, locked up people, like kidnapped them. Paul, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah. Obsessive. Are we talking about Robin Williams? Yeah. That's why you'll just have to tune in to Cinemarks. Yeah, how about you guys? Um, yeah, you guys can review that movie on Cinemarks, airing on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, right? Uh, yeah, I, well, I highly recommend I'll, it to anybody. Our schedule Cinemark. at the minute is once every two weeks, like every other Wednesday. Oh, it's it's on every two two weeks. Yeah. So uh, on a Wednesday, don't get me wrong. I think eventually we'll move to weekly, but uh, it's just our schedule. Consistency schedules. is key, Renee. Consistency is key. That's why McDonald's is so successful. They got good Wi-Fi. And good Wi-Fi. Sure. Well, I, should, I should go. I should go there. And like, <laughs> I should be there. Okay, uh, Paul. Vincent Gallo. While yeah. Paul answers this, I will be. I have to shovel some snow, guys. I'll be right back. You know what? Dude, it's I gotta keep shoveling because if not, it's it's that bad out there. Try living in Canada, boys. You'll, uh, you'll oh, understand. Yeah, you get to shovel. Can you take us on a little tour no, of you shoveling? Well, I'm on a laptop right now. Ah. Oh. One day when I actually charge my phone, I might actually do that. But um, yeah, I'll be right back. So you can have a toaster outside, but not a laptop. Get I with do. it, man. <laughs> I do. Vincent Gallo. Come on, Paul. I'm not. Who is Vincent Gallo? First, as I should be in his work, but I know he did like, was it Buffalo? Uh, ah. He's definitely more of like an underground actor. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do a whole lot for a while, and then I think he came back. Um, did a movie I think for the Daily Wire, uh, with their promote their company, uh, Bonfire Entertainment. I don't know if it was it was it shot in. I can't remember, but I should I should watch more of his stuff because I've always thought he has a a very captivating look, and by all accounts, a highly respected actor. I just think he's just one of those actors that kind of works when he wants to and does projects that he's into and it's not really anything mainstream so um that's homework for you and i james uh james here says he sent a four pound fifty uh any good baker what's that mean the hell oh no burka burka no idea. I think it's an acronym. All right. I don't know uh, what is your opinion of Shane Douglas, and do you think Triple H ripped off his franchise gimmick? I do in some way. I think he did. Um, I heard a 
interview once with Shane, he said that one of Hunter's pr- promos was verbatim what one of his pr- promos. Oh, really? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at well, all. The shit, this shit that um, yeah, the triple threat Cena does isn't that, that was, uh, yeah, but he was in a threat? faction. Yeah, it was like him and Kush Candido and Bam Bam Bigelow, right? But the like Cena did this and shit, Francine, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they Shane do that a lot. Awesome. If so, somebody that they don't like or whatever, they'll rip off his shit just to piss them off more, right? Mm-hmm. Messed up, bro. I know, bro. Well, I love Nunzio, working like Nunzio. one of my most memorable matches in Italy was with Nunzio. How about you? Oh, bro? really? Yeah. What was memorable about it? Just the heat we had. It was the night there after. Go. Uh, it was the night Hong after a football slash soccer match. Football. And he's big baby face, right? That's, he yeah. loved going to Italy. <laughs> yeah. And France had beat Italy the night before. And then the crowd was just, yeah. Jeez. It was so easy. And then I called the whole match. I said, can I call the match in the ring? He let me. I was like, okay, good. And it was on, buddy. Not out there, though, right? Because he's always like one of those nervous guys. Yeah, that's the thing. He's, that's one thing about him. He's super fucking paranoid. But I said, no, just let me call it. And we called it. And I called it. It was great. Yeah, good guy. Big feet. Yeah. Big feet. There you go, Topper. Paul, you'd make a great uh, Casey Jones in TMT. I love that. And that's the thing. I used to always get Vincent Gallo confused with Elias Cotias, who was uh, Casey Jones in that uh, first series of Ninja Turtle movies, but Casey Jones always a, a favorite character of mine. I had the toy. Great look. Very cool. Uh, do you remember that character? I don't know if you're familiar with Ninja Turtles, Renee. Casey yep. Jones, he had like the hockey mask. And... Yeah. Didn't yeah, he have a cool. fling with April O'Neil? Well, maybe. I don't know. Like, didn't him and April O'Neil hook up in the movies? Can I? Yeah. I don't remember. I haven't watched it for a long time, but I think they kind of do. Yeah, they hooked up, I think. Yeah, like a fling. It would make sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, Certainly don't want to, you know, hurt a hook up with a turtle. I also sent a five-pound supercharger uh, earlier. Uh, It said, what was uh, Paul and Renee's favorite memory in New York City when they were in WWE? Um... The night me and Sly sang the French national anthem, and we got so much heat that we needed police escorts after the show. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Mine isn't a. He just said New York City, right? Not MSG specific. Or did he say MSG True. specific? True. I think in New York City, yeah. I think MSG. So I remember Brian and I had an appearance at a hospital for terminally ill children and we had this when we had the belts and that was definitely a um an appearance that stands out as one of my favorite moments just working for that company because it was just so um i don't know anytime the whole situation is just tragic you know the whole thing is very tragic but like to go and see just the excitement and joy that you know what i felt a couple of nobodies like could do just for kids like just because you're taking you know time to go see them and you know them with the belts and like it's just like those are the things that make so much of just all the bullshit and everything you put up with like worth it you know obviously i mean that's like something that really stood out to me um but that was in i want to say it was in harlem um yeah, those are the things you, to me at least, you walk away with more than anything is just the connection with people, with, you know, human beings, um, but especially with, like, the children, you know, especially kids that are just, it, it's just so sad, you know, you, it's so easy to take so much of this crap for granted, 
things that we do, eating several times a day, eating nutritiously, whatever, <laughs> human interaction, so many things. You know, you just take it for granted. No, I'm serious. Why are you laughing? Um, um, take, you take for granted being able to eat? Are times tough, Paul? No, but I'm just saying, like, not everybody gets – nutritious meals or good food consistently or you know or you know some kids are just happy eating bread for dinner or something i don't know like but like fuck man it's yeah it's really when you're there, the fact that you know you're gonna get a check every week or every other yeah week sometimes. And i mean a lot of people don't have that luxury you know especially in the wrestling business coming up but sometimes you look back and some of your best memories are when you had nothing and you're struggling. And those are like chasing that dream is the best part of it. James, are we boring? You, buddy? You got to get some sleep. No, it's half as well. Uh, so, someone said super chat. When we said Burke, they meant any stories in Burke and Head or Burke and Wood or Burke and Hood. Burke and Hood. Oh, shit. Uh, is that up by you? No, it's right next to Liverpool. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool, um, no, working hood. Liverpool. Oh yeah, well the 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 house was like falling apart and the roof was caving in, and then the promoter blamed me for everything. What? He blamed me? For, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If there was a mess on the floor, it's my fault. If people left dishes in the sink, it was my fault. <laughs> the roof's caving in; it's my fault. Yeah, everything was my fault. So. James falling asleep. That's your fault, too. That's my fault. Squidward well, testicles. Will we ever see Renee with a beard? Last yeah. time I had a beard when, when I was living in Birkenhood, actually, I grew a beard. But that's another thing that I hate. Everybody now has a beard. This why? is just laziness. I'm getting rid of it. Why? Well, well, well I, sh I shaved my beard off, and now you know why I've got a beard. Well, yeah, I'm talking about in wrestling, like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, used like, to be different, and everybody looks the same with these freaking beards, man. It's like, oh, I don't know. Looks like kids with, like, those fake beards that, like you get at a Halloween store. Well, if you want facial hair, be different. Make yourself stand out. Yeah, shape that shit, man. Make that presentable, you know? Like, shape it up, man. A little wave or something. Some lightning bolts. Come on, man. Shave that up, man. Match it with your pubes. You're good. <laughs> Let him merge. What do you guys remember of Gunnar Scott in WWE and OVW, and why did he get released so soon in WWE after pinning Booker yeah, T a few idiot. months before that? Uh, Paul? <laughs> this is why. I have a great Gunnar Scott story for you. Do it. In Do England. It. Um fine a guy's like whatever nice guy from oklahoma uh some people just have an idea of how this thing works like when you're on the road or you're being you know on on some big machine like dota v and you're touring people have their ideas um so we were in england one time and we had a flight it might have been out of like Luton or something. I can't remember, but it was, um, or like Stansted. Or, I don't even remember, but it wasn't, it was a drive, you know, where we, from where we were standing. It was quite a commute, maybe two hours or an hour and a half. And um, he had just gotten put, he might have actually replaced Horseshoe if they ended up, I can't remember if they sent Horseshoe home for the meningitis or not, but. Or it might have been somebody else had got somebody had to get sent home and then he got flown in, even though we were doing TV in England, and then they had him stay on for like the rest of the tour. Okay. It would happen every now and then, but anyway, so he was the one that got added, got flown over for TV and then stayed on for the rest of the tour, which was like another week or week and a half, I can't remember. So we're loading, we're getting onto the bus. There's a heel bus and a baby face bus and we're getting outside the hotel. And I remember he wheels up his stuff and he's just like sunglasses on indoors. 
Oh, of course. Yeah. And it's like doing all this kind of crap and uh, it's like bullshitting with trying to make small talk with someone here and there. I can't remember, but then, uh, yeah, he just kind of wheeled his stuff up front and just kind of had this kind of look on his face like, you fucking made it. You fucking made it. He didn't say that, but that's, that's what he looked like. He was saying in his head. And then uh, Bay Vases get on the bus. He'll get on the bus. We leave. You put your shit on the, on the, you know, you pull your own bags on the bus. We leave. Yeah. We get to the airport and it's a charter flight, thankfully. And now we have to wait like another two hours because he didn't put his bag on the bus because he thought that we would just have like handlers, like people to just like put your luggage on the bus for you. And so he wheeled his stuff out there and he just just walked off. And so, like, they had to send a car to go back to the hotel to retrieve this one dude's luggage, and uh, that might have been his 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 first and, and last tour, if I remember correctly. Was he released like, after that? Uh, not directly because of that, but like, I mean, they were ragging on him pretty bad. Like, there were that whole like that he didn't hear the end of that, you know, which kind of makes sense, you know. I mean, that's. You see everyone else remember. putting their own luggage or like wheeling it up to the person who's loading the bus. I just and remember he, he got a crocodile tattoo on his forearm. I thought that was on his forearm. Yeah, a crocodile. Well, he's in, what Oklahoma crocodiles? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, I guess he likes crocodiles, man. <laughs> well, another thing was too that like his his wife. This is another thing. If like you get hired, like watch what your spouse or your significant other or whatever, like watch out what they put on their accounts as well. Because like if they um, have to, if they're, if they've got their own social media accounts and they start posting shit and like saying like hot husband and like hot superstar husband, look what he bought me. And like, you know, all this stuff. I mean, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't get over well with the boys or, you know, the locker room sometimes when, when it's just like, I, I don't know, like in, in your significant other's eyes, you might be the biggest star in the world. Um, a lot of times like when that becomes something that they run with, somebody's going to end up seeing something and bringing it to somebody's attention. And it's just like, you can avoid all those headaches and just handle your own business. You don't need to there's, be there's promoted. Been quite a few wrestler wives that go off on social media and the guys. Get okay. You get what I'm saying then. Right. I feel like I'm yeah, just, yeah not sure how to articulate this but yeah. yeah you can get heat from a significant other spouse whatever posting shit online i mean that happens still to this day right yeah, yeah. There, wasn't there a few guys james you would know this wasn't there some guys that got released because of that I got fired I'm trying to remember now um i know um mero rusev he uh he turned on some booking ideas and like his wife, Lana, is saying, oh, he's going to come back to WWE one day, and he hasn't been on TV for months. <laughs> While well, he's uh, signed to another company, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, like, yeah, there, there is times where it's like, Orton's wife, she's very careful what she puts, um, mm -hmm. like, while well, he's out injured and stuff. She's a classy woman. Like, she's a very classy person. Like, they have, yeah. there's a way to carry yourself. But um, there is, I have seen him, and there is like just idiots. And it's like, honestly, I don't think wrestlers should have social media anyway. Um, but Thank you. My, my wife doesn't watch wrestling. The only wrestler she knew of was Giant Baba. Yeah. She won? Yeah. When I met her, she only knew Giant Baba. Giant Baba, chuck. Okay. That's all she knew. And that's the way I like it. Well, I'm sure she knows more people now because of you. Well, she doesn't watch it on TV. She doesn't give two shits about wrestling at all. Good. Could care less. Yeah. Real good. Real good. Paul, Sut Gaines recommending Brotherhood of the Wolf to, to you. Oh, yeah. I know. That's a great film. Um, very 
early appearance from uh, Mark Dacascos as the Native American. Nah, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy, the main character in that. He was in a few films for a, for a minute. And uh, he always had a, like, the aristocrat Triple H, like that version. He had a similar kind of look to that. I always yeah. thought I was like, yeah. But yeah, Brotherhood of the Wolf. Very, very good film. They're uh, called Aboriginals, French. Aboriginals now. French film. What's that? They're called Aboriginals now, not Native Americans. Okay, well. But they, the they change every like three or four years. They were Native Americans, then uh, Aboriginals. And, I don't know. But if anybody has the right, it's it's them. 100%. All right, thank you. I'll take note of all that. <laughs> uh, $5 donation. Uh, can Paul tell the story about him, Brian, and Ben while going to who is while Renee and, fought, uh, Renee and James' thoughts on promoting Chris's good side? Does he mean Chris Benoit's good side? Yeah. Oh. Do you want to tell the Hooters story? What is the Hooters story, Paul? Um, Brian wasn't there. Did I freeze again? No, you're okay. like slow motion almost. Yeah. And he's gone. Okay. Let's try to get through some more chats before he comes back. Uh, Renee, you were including the story mode. They reckon in two game. Pinning you was literally the most difficult part of the game. Thanks for an aggravating childhood memories. You're welcome. I didn't know that. Extreme, Punch Drunk Love, Adam Sandler's best movie. I liked uh, The Longest Yard. I like Happy Gilmore when he's playing that's golf. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Should, should have McGavin. Uh, Rex, I trust you. Uh, paid $5. Which wrestler uh, brought the weirdest items to the locker room? <sighs> See, back then, I mean, you get heat for anything, so I can't. Paul, who... did you ever see any of the boys bring anything weird into a locker room? One guy in Maine on an independent show brought his Emmy, his Emmy Award. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Paul? What, Paul, what are you doing? Paul, you're on camera, you know. <laughs> Your life out. Are you there? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Is he acting right now? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that clip? There's the suit, the Zoom meeting, and the one guy thinks he's clicked his screen off, and he goes off, and he comes back, and he's got a uh, finger baby oil and some tissues, and he starts undoing no his trousers. Oh shit! And there's like. Three, there's like three girls and it's like three other lads and the one guy's trying to message him and he's starting to take his pants down <laughs> and, and they start logging off well he oh thinks he's turned his screen off wow. uh, I'm, I'm going to have to find it one day it's hilarious uh, the single worst professional wrestler ever Batista, Batista. Yeah, Appar apparently he's going to the Hall of Fame this year um uh, Hey, he's back. He's we thought he was going to start back. jerking off. <laughs> What's your thoughts on uh, Hurricane Helms, pal? I like the guy. There's a hurricane coming through. Hmm. Yeah, nice guy. Also a mark for himself, but nice guy. True. True. I mean, I, I like him. He was funny. Yeah. He's a good dude. I, I broke his nose accidentally in Australia. And, really? um, yeah, <clears throat> during the match, total accident. I felt bad about it. Um, then I ended up sending him a care package, 
uh, of just like crap that I found. Like that was all green. And I sent him like this green, like gummy rat uh, <laughs> in the care package. And he, I guess he, I guess he thought it was a bizarre gesture because he thought, I was sending him pills or something. Um, and when he opened it up and saw that there was like a green kazoo and like green Mardi Gras beads and like a green gummy rat. And like just oh, always... I mean, that's a, what a, you know, a kind gesture. Like you heard a guy and, you know. I thought so, you know. Like after was, that thing cool. with us and Spike where I almost killed him, I brought him like, I don't know, like four or five grams of weed. Wait, who? Spike? Yeah, when we did that double thing. Oh, the, the table side, gimmick? Yeah, and he almost fucking broke his neck. I brought him. You brought him weed? Did he? I didn't know he smoked. Oh, yeah. Spike? Yeah. Yeah, I brought him like four or five yeah. grams of weed. Interesting character. Burke and Hood stories. Uh, Hood. Boy, emphasis Hood's on the ghetto yeah. aspect of it. Hood aspect of, of it. Yeah, I, spent a lot, I spent a lot of time there. At one point in time, we roomed with uh, Generico was there. Chuck Taylor was there. Chris Hero was there. Uh, Brian Danielson, Gangrel, uh, PCO, uh, Papa Don, you ever, you, ever, you ever run into him in New York? Papa Don, been wrestling forever. No, I'm familiar with the Papa Don in Texas, but the less said, the better. Oh, okay. There's guys from New York. At one point in time, it was all like a lot of guys that are on national television now were there. Yeah. What was it, like a halfway house for wrestlers or something? Or like... Pretty much. No, it's when you went and worked for this promotion, All Star Wrestling. They put you all up in this, this house in Birkin Hood. Who was that, I, Dixon? For Dixon, yeah. And uh, the house started falling apart, and it was my fault. <laughs> Paul, thanks for creating the six-sided ring. You created the six-sided ring? So some on my free time, you know? No big deal. I've Have you ever worked in six-sided rings? I have, and I hate them. The, yeah. The ropes, you hit into it. Libre like, USA. You know, it's yeah. There's no bounce on the ropes, and the the rings that I've been in were super stiff. I hated it and awkward. I'm not used to it at all. I mean, one aspect it's neat to see like a bigger area to work in, but yeah, it's it's pretty strange, especially if they try to do like that thing where they put your they put you in the corner and put like the leg across the middle rope and this leg across the middle rope. And you're like, oh god, <laughs> like the yeah. ropes are so much wider and. Like it if you're doing it doesn't work well with that, and stuff like that, and you like bounce up, you know, doing stuff off the ropes and stuff, it's perfect because it's you know it's so tight and there's no yeah. But if you're actually hitting the ropes, fuck, you feel like you broke your ribs. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, they're always stiff rings. So, okay, Paul, did you ever see anybody? I I said a, a guy in um. A guy in Maine and brought his Emmy Award. He won an Emmy Award. He was at the show and he brought it backstage. Did you ever see anybody bring in like weird shit into the locker room? I'm sure I did. Um, I mean, I had a fucking trident backstage when we were in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, guy, it would probably come to me later. Nothing okay. weirder, I guess, just off the top of my head than like an extra, like one or two or three, even like protein jugs, brand new, to like dish out to people just to like get on kiss their good them. side. Kiss their ass. Yeah. But actually, yeah, I do remember. And I won't say any names, but obviously I'm not a bodybuilder, uh, you know, unless you're building a wide building. Uh, but I um, remember seeing in a Canadian locker room, and you don't have to say anything, you might be familiar, but I remember seeing uh, 
a bottle of something being passed around and it had like horses on it and <laughs> dudes were like drinking from this shit and it said like veterinary use only and I was like what the fuck is that they were like drinking it yeah it was like a syrup pump or something and they were like oh clenbuterol I guess is that what that is clenbuterol yeah it, it's uh, what does that do a pre contest drug that uh, to get to burn fat yeah it's like, it's does it, like a, how does that work? I don't get I it. it. I think it's like a bronco dilator for horses. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of bodybuilders use it to uh because it rips you up. Clenbuterol. Clenbuterol. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember looking at. It, I was like, veterinary use only. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm trying to turn into like battle beast or something. Yeah, you get a big cock like a horse. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, Express. Did you ever read Dynamite Kids book, Pure Dynamite? Yeah, it's a great book. Yeah. yeah, I know I read it in one day when I was 13. And uh he was taking a, a drug. he was take yeah, I know. He was taking a drug called uh Equipoise, which is uh for horses. And Jeez. um yeah, he was taking way too much. <laughs> I remember Rocky <laughs> Johnson making a, a, a joke about that because he took it back in the day too, and then because it's for horses. He goes, yeah, man, I started craving oats, and all of a sudden, I'd walk around and go, <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Rocky Johnson, that guy was, oh, he's so funny. Like, you want to know where Rocky gets his fuck, uh, Dwayne gets his charisma, man, it's from his dad. God. Oh, Rocky Sr.? Yeah, no, we're yeah, tight. Guys, we're tight, yeah. Guys, yeah, guys. man, tell me everything. It's Rocky. I've taught him a few things, too, man. Are we caught up? We're caught up. We're caught up. All right. Well, Paul's gonna finish. Wow. Here. Thank you, Paul, for. So Jonah's at Raw right now, huh? Jonah's at Raw. Yes. Where is it? New York, I Philly, guess. Philadelphia. Uh, yeah. Philly. I actually might actually want to watch the see what's going on, see what's happening. I might actually want to catch Are it tonight. Sure? So. So anyway, I want to thank uh, James. You need to get some sleep, pal. And uh, yeah. yeah. Oh shit! Oh. Here we go. They, they did it to me on purpose to torture me. No more shout. Well, Ryan, Ryan's from the UK as well, so <laughs> fair play. I asked earlier what crowds you. like work more. Uh, I asked earlier what crowds like. What crowds do you like working for? UK or US? Um. Depends where, what part of the U.S. Uh, as a heel working in the Northeast, like Boston, New York, it's amazing, but it can be scary. Uh, I love working in California. I love working in Texas. Um, but the England is awesome, too. I think they're more respectful in the U.K. and they appreciate wrestling. Yeah, yeah. because we don't get it. I think. What did you say, James? It's because we don't get it. You don't get it as much? Well, the US companies, WWE, we just don't get it that much, so we're right. just very appreciated when we do right. get it. Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, shit, British wrestling back before Vince did his takeover was hot as hell. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, what a great place to wrestle. And even, even like, when I went over there in 2008, I mean, Brian Dixon was still drawing really good crowds. I mean, we went to Liverpool and we sold out the auditorium. I think it was 2,500 people for an, in, like, how many independents draw that now? Right? How many? Right. 2,500. Shit. Yeah, right? that's crazy. And it's like you hear, like, all these other independents, oh, yeah, it's amazing. Five or 600. Shit, we were going over there selling out venues, man, like, 1,000 people. 2,500 people. Uh, and did I get a did I get a bonus? No. Oh wait, that night he did buy me a diet. He bought me one drink, a diet coke. Nice. Yeah. So thank you. Very kind of him. When will Paul um, get merchandise? Sorry, Tom. We'll see. We'll see. Real soon. Paul, really? didn't you say? Didn't you say a bunch of people actually complimented you on the show when you went and did that independent? That they were talking no. about. Okay, why, James? Why are you lying to me, James? You told me. 
You said to me people came up to you and said that they watched for cafe. Oh, I thought you meant on this show saying about that show. No, at that show, yeah, quite a few people were coming up to me saying they were big fans of the cafe. Okay, well, g- give me your address and I'll send you a bunch of t-shirts. The Looking Good Boys and the Kiss Me Randy. I guarantee you, you'll sell them, dude. That'd because be good. I friend. like them. Because you're yeah. my friend. And, Please, uh, send me everything. I'll sell <laughs> everything to you. And you can actually have merchandise. And yeah. Okay. Vince oh, McMahon. Because you, huh? you're my friend, Paul, and I help all my friends. What's this is your biggest, friend? I like it. Yeah. What's the biggest steak you ever eat with what the biggest? What the fuck? Did you ever do the big can... Texan, Renee, and uh, Amarillo? Did you ever do that? No, did you? No, I wanted to. The 72 ounce steak. I did do the Aki Bono steak and uh, um, uh, Ribera Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's basically the same concept. If you can eat the whole, I think it's like, it's a big ass fucking steak. If you can eat the whole steak with the rice and the soup and the salad, uh, I think they did before. They did it for free, but you can't, I don't know if they're still doing it, but. I don't know what the biggest steak I've had, though. I mean, how big is that one at Ribera? Because I remember that that gimmick. I think it's like, uh, how big is the one in Texas? 72 ounces. So what's that, like a pound and a half or something? I think it's more than that. Yeah, I think it's... I don't similar. know. You're like basically eating a small baby or something. Yeah, it's a big-ass, big-ass freaking steak, and that's the gimmick. If you yeah. Can eat the thing. Yeah. I got no Yes. Oh, you, yeah. Do you have anything like no, that? I was going to ask if James had had any big yeah. steaks at the uh, pubs up there. Um, no, but I found a place recently. They've got, uh, if you eat them, you get your meal for free. There's a 72 ounce. Yeah, I think that's the biggest one, 72 ounce, but I think it's like 100 quid. Yeah, they're, yeah, I think it's similar in Amarillo. It's like either 100 bucks or it's something up there. Now, is there a time, like a timetable where you have to eat it? Like, it's an hour. I, I have, an hour? Is it now? I haven't been to this one yet. I just, uh, I was going through my video and I saw someone uh, said, oh, they do, there's a big steakhouse because there's a, there's a 50 ounce for 70 pound and there's a 72 ounce for 100 pound. And if you eat it, you get your meal for free, but I don't know if there's a timer. There might be. I would I would imagine so. Usually they put you up on like, a kind of stage and stuff. I don't know. I'll have to go one day and try it. Live yeah. stream it. Live stream it. Okay, this is the last yeah. one. Folks. We should do something like that. You think it's the last one? Renee and Pauls, any memories of SummerSlam 04 and thoughts if the roster from that day could fit today in today's roster in that time? Uh, I definitely think today that roster could fit today. Um, what did I do? Oh, I wrestled Van Dam in the pre-show. What oh, did you do? Cool. That was in Toronto. I think it was just uh, no big deal. Just me, Kidman, and Ray Mysterio against all three Dudleys, <laughs> and we went over. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did we who go over? Who? I don't know. Did you pin? Did you pin Blubber? I certainly didn't get I I honestly don't remember. Maybe I got pinned. I don't remember, man. I, I can't remember, you know. I honestly huh? don't remember. Uh, it was like the yeah. opening match, I think. It, it might have been no. Spike over Kidman. Spike over I Kidman, think, yeah. I think that might have been it. Yeah. Because I think yeah, I did a big Devon Lariat. And can today's roster... And then something happened with Ray. What's that? Could today's rosters compete back then? I don't know. I don't watch enough WWE to tell you. I know a lot of guys wouldn't even be hired with the way they look physically. Would you agree, (laughs) Paul? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You got to have the muscles. You got to have the tan. Yeah. People don't understand how much bigger pressure there was. Especially with Johnny. I mean, shit, I was 
six three two forty five with six pack abs, and I was told by Dave, Dave, and Jenny's I had to get bigger. I wasn't big enough. Yeah. So anyway, all right, uh, let's okay. go. Pro- one last one here, infamous A. When you think dead crowd, what city comes to mind? Uh, huh, these days, probably all of them. Uh, dead crowd back then. Christ. Well, I guess some people would consider like Japan a dead crowd because that you know they're very quiet. But it's like I explained to you, James. And it's like the Japanese right. when they watch pro wrestling, it's like they're watching live theater or a movie. They want to be quiet, and you know what I mean. Would you agree, Paul? When you're in Japan, the, the way I explained it, it's like yeah, why they're quiet? It's like a tennis it's audience. Like, yeah, it's like they're watching a, a live play or a movie. They want to be quiet and respectful, not to bother people while they're watching, right? So what do you say is for in terms of the dead dead crowd? Like what cities came to mind? Yeah, or um, I guess Japan, the because they're you know they're all quiet, but they're being respectful. Oh, that's why you brought it. Okay. Yeah. What uh, would you say? Germany is a lot like that too, as far as no, being- I didn't. No, I think I don't know, man. I think there are parts of Mexico that can be tough if you're not. But there's usually so many people in the matches that they're going to cheer for somebody. But um, if you're just in a match with people that nobody knows, and like it can be, I don't know. Maybe no, that's not even a fair assessment. Well, okay, I don't know. North America. In North America, what towns were like tough as far as working? I mean, like. Typically, the Philly, New York City crowds are the ones that, but that's like because they're you know full of smart marks and you know they they're hoping to see you know somebody fucking get drilled into the ground. Yeah, I mean just something crazy, and it's all about topping what you just saw. And but those crowds can also be very rewarding, you know, if you're putting in the effort and and you're telling a good story. So. Even that's not too fair to say. Um, you know, probably some of these towns that you'd have to look on a map to really find them, and but just kind of mid America. I don't know, um, like Texarkana or something. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. They got their Mountain Dews and everything. And they're just double fisting it. We gonna read it. Yeah. Jonah will jump the barricade, use the sign of Cafe de René to hit Vince's illegal paralegal, do the French tickler while shouting by our merch. That'd be amazing. If Jonah someone's, did that. Just put, someone's just said that Taker's just passed the torch to Bray Wyatt. Is that another oh, yeah. Bray Wyatt stealing? Bray Wyatt's oh, fucking yeah, overrated as that? fuck. He's overrated as fuck, Bray. Bray Wyatt yeah. is overrated as fuck. We're done. We're done here. We're done. We're done here, people. Right. No more questions. We don't want them. All right. Well, James, need to needs to get, James needs to get some sleep. Paul needs to finish whatever crackers he's eating, and I need to shovel. Everyone. Well, we got to promote this week. Are you really going to shovel? That's um, nuts, man. This Friday, oh, the blueprint. That. Big Matt Morgan. Live Friday. And uh, oh, is he back on Friday? Yeah, uh, you can feel <laughs> free to join anytime you want, Paul. If you want to, if you're busy, that's fine. And, yes, sorry, uh, but... man. Working on a Christmas project, okay? No, problem. is a uh, dead as Bubba's love life. Oh, <laughs> all right. But next Monday, Paul, can you can you join us, please? You have to come on more often, okay. Next Monday, yeah. I'll uh, Next Monday. get to McDonald's and log into their Wi-Fi. Yeah, and hopefully Jason Sensation can make his return. He's feeling a little under the weather. But, uh, okay, so until next, this Friday, au revoir et merci, mes amis. Bye-bye. Uh.